plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. At Tabor College, where the Blue Jays play. Welcome uh, to the, the Tabor College presentation of the football game. Uh, University of St. Mary's Tabor College. This is a senior day event. Um, we'll go ahead and tune into that and uh, have the uh, senior presentation begin here in a just a few minutes. Attention, ladies and gentlemen. At this time, Tabor College would like to recognize this year's football seniors and their parents. We want to thank them for their many hours of hard work and determination while conditioning, practicing, and playing for Tabor College. Number one, Jawan Holtz, wide receiver. Houston, Texas, graphic design with minor in coaching. His parents are Brandon and Janelle Holtz. His parents and his sister, Braley Holtz, are with him today. Number four, Andre Dryling Renteria, running back, Denver, Colorado. His major is business marketing. His parents are Charles and Monica Lamo. La Manaka, his brothers Dante Renteria and Stephen Dryling are with him today. Number eight, Parker Folks, defensive line, Clay Center, Kansas. He is a physical education, health, and coaching major. His parents, Mike and Micah Folks, are here, along with his sister Katie, Jessica, and her husband Sean, and his nieces Savannah and Piper, and his aunt. Marty. Number 14, Trent Gwynn, quarterback safety from Mineral Wells, Texas. He is a sports management major. His parents are Tony and Dana Gwynn. Number 21, James Lang, defensive back, Alameda, California. His major is business marketing and, adm adm and administration. His parent is Diane Lang. He is escorted by Angel Sanchez, Brendan Williford, Dakota Donaldson, Gustavo Villarreal, and Cole Long. Number 23, Gunnar Reese. He's a defensive back from McPherson, Kansas. He's a criminal justice major with a minor in psychology. His mother is Leanne Beam, and his stepdad is Neil Beam. Number 27, Raymond Peralt Jr. is a defensive back from El Cajon, California. He's a business marketing major. His parents are Xavier and Antonia Palacios. And his brothers, Christian Raro and Donald Harris are here with him today. Number 40, Chris Castillo. He's a linebacker from Tustin, California. He's a criminal justice major. His father, Jesus Castillo, Amada, and Phil Tingaritas. His parents and his sister, Amaya Castillo, are with him today. Number 41, Patrick Leonard. He's from Murfreesboro, Tennessee. He is a business management major with minors in marketing and psychology. 
His parents are John and Elena Leonard. Number 44, Riggs Robbins is a defensive end from Wichita, Kansas. He's a business major, business management major with a minor in sports marketing. His father is Roger Robin and his mother is Amy Gilman. He's also accompanied by his sisters, Olivia Robin and Sylvia Robin. Number 55, Joseph T. He's an offensive lineman from Round Rock, Texas. He is a health and human performance major. Roki, Roki and Vanessa T. are with him today. They're his parents, along with his girlfriend, Caitlin Mason. Number 56, Cole Long, is a defensive lineman from Mulvane, Kansas. He is a biochemistry and biology major and it, with a minor in mathematics. His parents are John and Wendy Long, and his brother is also here, Kyler Long. Number 61, Zion Bowens is an offensive lineman from New Orleans, Louisiana. He's a psychology major. His mother, Chandra St. Etienne, is here, and his aunt, Tiffany Adil. Number 78, Armando Meza Castillas. Casillas is an offensive lineman from Salem, Oregon. He's working on an MED in neuroscience and trauma. His father is Pablo Meza, and he's accompanied by the offensive line. And number 99, Joe Juan Thompson is a defensive lineman from Richmond, California. He's a psychology major with a minor in coaching. His father, Christopher Thomas, and mother, Nikki Maryland, are with him today, along with his sister, Hala Soltani. Please give these folks a round of applause.
Stock Exchange. Media moguls Floyd Wonder are now the richest men in the world. That's right, forget about Carnegie, forget about Ford, forget about Rockefeller. Floyd Wonder has the Midas touch. Sources say they're worth millions. Some say billions. Look out, folks, here they come. I don't really care, I'm gonna be a millionaire like you. Welcome to Hillsboro, Kansas. For this broadcast of Tabor College versus University of St. Mary. We're at Joel H. Ween's Stadium. I'm Grant Myers. I'm joined by Robert Rempel. It's good to be here today. Absolutely. Wonderful day so far. Pretty good conditions. Not a lot of wind. We'll go ahead and get into some introductions. We've got uh, University of uh, St. Mary Spires, head coach Lance Henson, and uh, Tabor College, Mike Gardner. Lance is in his third year, but this is his second stint at St. Mary's as a head coach. Um, coach Gardner, 14th season. Uh, coming into the game, there's a 2-7 and seven record and uh, for both teams in conference. The current KCAC standings are seeing a tie between St. Mary's at uh, seventh place. And up at the top, we're having Kansas Wesleyan, number five in the nation, followed by Bethel and Southwestern. I think if you notice, the two of those play today, I think for the outright championship, is that uh, uh, Kansas Wesleyan? And uh, I'm not sure which one of those two, but I think there's a battle battle for that championship today i think you're right um i'd have to look and we'll get to that later probably but yeah that's interesting for sure someone from the kcac probably two teams are going to end up in the playoffs so getting into the starters for today ian queering left tackle uh we've got jace hayes uh freshman left guard brendan williford center sophomore Zion Bowens, a senior, uh, right guard. Cayman Garduno, uh, sophomore, right tackle. And coming into the skill position players, Andre Renteria having a great season. Uh, he's a senior, running back from Colorado. Caleb Hoppus, uh, he's a freshman. And uh, Raquez Jackson, sophomore. And uh, Angel Sanchez, wide receiver having a great freshman season as well, and Jerron Usher at tight end. The starting quarterback, Gustavo Villarreal from Visalia, California, a uh, junior college transfer in his first season here at Tabor. Um, he's having, uh, got off to a little bit of a rocky start, but he's actually kind of finishing well. I know he threw two touchdowns, no interceptions last week versus the big win in uh, Bethany in Lindsburg. And that was a big win for them last week, and it's good to get it going on this week. I will tell you, you got, you're going to get me in trouble already, Grant. You said going into the skill positions. Um, um, I got in trouble last week, and you're a former offensive lineman. And, uh, and an offensive <laughs> lineman guy uh, said, what are you talking about when you say skill position with the running back? You know the big dogs down down in the trenches are the reason the skill positions get to move. You're right, Robert. So. <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm betraying my kind I, I with know, that, uh, I know. <laughs> that comment. That's absolutely right. Uh, well, we'll just say they're the smart guys. That's right. They, that's they could right. be the, the intelligent ones. Yeah, too. we were the ones up front. They got to pave the way for them, right? That's right. <laughs> so moving on to defense. Yeah, so we've got uh, senior Parker Folks, uh, defensive end, number eight, Cole Long. Senior defensive end, number 56. Our D tackles are uh, uh, Dakota Donaldson. They're going with a three-man front today. Uh, Chris Castillo from California. He's a, a, this transfer in this past year. Uh, stepped in really well. And Josh Marshall, freshman from Arkansas uh, at the outside linebacker. Uh, we've also got Jordan Sukow kind of playing that strong safety outside linebacker uh, role. Khalil Mason at cornerback. Uh, James Lang, a senior there, and uh, he's a, uh, our other cornerback on the opposite side. 
Jaden Alexander, it's good to see him back. Uh, he stepped in really well. McPherson, uh, freshman, and uh, Raymond Peralt, the senior there, at our other safety. Uh, defensive highlight for this game, Riggs Robin, um, senior there for um, freshman, sorry, um, for defensive end from Wichita, Kansas. Um, I believe he's a Bishop Carroll guy. And uh, the starting specialist today, uh, punting, Dehan Nelson, and Nathan Hellig will handle the uh, kicking duties. Patrick Leonard's long snapping, Franklin Miller, uh, is doing the returning duties. Let's go to kickoff. If you notice the coin toss, St. Mary's did win the toss and they deferred to the second half. So Tabor is going to take the kickoff today with Miller back deep. We'll see how these uh, Blue Jays do this uh, first half with their offense. Gotten off to some slow starts in the past. We'll see if they can get some uh, good momentum going here. Well, looks like Raquez Jackson gets the ball to start off with a nice Nice return to get going. Yeah, got out to, uh, we're at about the 38-yard line to start this drive. Good field position. This will be a good game for Tabor to get uh, to end the season with here and get us four wins overall for the season. Um, almost pulling us back to 500. Yeah, it's definitely been a, a, a rebuilding season for the Blue Jays, and uh, it's good to see some of these young guys getting some playing time. Uh, getting some really valuable experience, and it, it, it really is helpful if you end on a high note. A screen pass out to Renteria here. That's good. It's good to see him getting involved early. He's a talented guy once we get the ball in his hands. Get a gain of about four or five. It's a good first down. I didn't get to see the game last week, but I heard he had quite a game. He did. I, I was I was happy as an offensive lineman watching that game to be able to see them just keep pounding uh, the football and handing it to, to number four and letting him go to work and um, sticking with it throughout that game. And what was it, 25 carries, 170 yards, I think, two touchdowns. It is. Just on the ground. I'm guessing he had some receiving yards too. Looks like they're trying to soften up the middle of this defense, maybe get some of those big D linemen from St. Mary's running sideways and uh yeah loosen things up there for some inside runs later now with st mary's we did not get a, a starting group right away so i'm going to try and pick up a few of their names and numbers as we go here so i might be a little slow getting some of their numbers on tackles as we go so we got an extra lineman in there now doing a little shifting off uh unbalanced it is Renteria, uh, three plays, Renteria, all to Renteria. Uh, he gets about a gain of a yard. That's going to uh, bring up a fourth down. We're going to see, yep, they're going to bring out the punting team. Looks like their safety, number 24, Curtis, came up and made that stop. DeHaan Nelson back for the Blue Jays. And yeah, the wind has actually picked up. Uh, quite a bit right now and uh, the you get a punt into the wind you can see it kind of stalled and it's going back now you get a blue jay bounce looks like get it uh st mary's to take over about the 30. see how our defense comes out here and hopefully put the ball in three a quick three and out like they did to us yeah, the, uh, the defense, I tell you what, uh, Coach Hill is probably one of the most creative uh, coaches that I've ever uh, had the, the pleasure of knowing and working with. He's had to overcome, I don't even know how many injuries on that defense this year. If you look at the sideline, we'll have quite a few guys on crutches. Well, I think you've had injuries, some players that didn't get to play that were supposed to, and just a whole change of what the original... <laughs> Original was supposed to be. Got a wide open wide receiver down here. Uh, looked like we had a broken coverage there. He's going to score. That was number uh, Jordan Hill from Ventura, California. That was a read option there, and we bit hard on that fake. Yep, that corner just uh, jumped up there and played that run. So right off the gate there, there was a 65-yard touchdown. Not what we wanted to see to start off here. 
Yeah, you can see uh, the, the cornerback, he'd come up so hard. Uh, there just wasn't any kind of recovery from that. No. Chris Feltz from Owasso, Oklahoma. Oklahoma kicked that extra point early on here in the first quarter, 7-0. an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. So back seven, uh, uh, seven nothing. St. Mary's over the Blue Jays, getting ready to receive the kickoff. Yeah, it's tough to get into a hole like that right from the start. To see how the the Blue Jays react with uh, uh, being down seven points. They stick with their run. Maybe they mix it up and uh, start getting some of the wide receivers involved. I didn't even look yet. Do you see, do you see who St. Mary's has beat this year? Obviously one of them was Bethany. I know Bethany hasn't won yet, I don't think, this year. I believe they've beat Bethany and Friends. Those are two. Okay. So you're going to take it out uh, right at the end zone, Sanchez about out to the 16, 17 yard line. Jackson again on the return. Now is Brock Brown from Lansing, Kansas on the tackle. First and 10 for the Blue Jays. They kind of stay in that big uh, personnel package with an extra offensive lineman, and they're going to do that shift uh, to an unbalanced look there again. <clears throat> Little play action oh. out to Hoppus. Wide open. Wide open. Great play, great throw, great catch. Villarreal, he, he really seems like he's kind of in his element when he's doing those bootlegs and kind of getting out and having a, a, a clear path to throw like that. He's had a lot of good plays, good throws like that this year. He really did. Did a nice job with that before Bryant made that tackle. You know, last night our high school team went up to Beloit and they had a very good offensive line that that should have been a whistle because of how free play there. But Oh, nice. That's good. You get a free play. I don't know if they're going to say it was uh, uh, dead or they, they had a whistle. Well, if it's offensive, they should have blown it down, but they, I think they let that one go. So. Offside, number 59, defense, that penalty is declined. First down. Is that Raquez uh, Jackson on that catch? That's what I saw. So I think, yeah, he's. Pass from Villarreal to. That's good. It's a, you know, that's about a 40 yard gain. So he's already had two returns on, on kickoffs, a nice pass and reception, and just keep that going. A little split back look inside give to uh, Renteria. He's going to get maybe a yard or back to the line. I'm going to say Brown from the Spires there came up, made that tackle. Are we still in that heavy look on that line, on the line? Now it looks like we're back into. A yeah, we've got a uh, oh, kind of like a 11 personnel. We've got a tight end and a running back, and then the uh, wide receivers are out there. We've got Jerron Usher. Yep. Motioning back. Here comes Jackson. Looked like a little confusion in the backfield there. 
Yeah, it looked like he maybe tried to change the play and not everyone had got the message on that. Yeah, a little mix up there caused might have caused that play not to work right. I imagine they're probably going to uh, Coach Nelson's probably going to call this and Gardner's going to call this as a, a four down territory, especially with the wind where we're at right now. It really isn't the field goal territory, yeah. He's going to be mm. sacked there. The four man rush, number 99, was in there pretty fast. Tackle for a loss. Yeah, that's big Amar Sardar. 6'2", 280-pound freshman. He's a big boy. He is. I think Rafael Sanjines, uh, or maybe it's Sanguines, um, got in there. Uh, he's a 6'3", 275-pounder out of Oceanside, California. Got an injured player for St. Mary's down. Timeout. It looks like, you know. We'll go ahead and take a, a break on the injury timeout. The concession stand. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family owned and operated full service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at HillsboroFordKS.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes Makes the difference. <laughs> well, we're back. Uh, timeout. Looks like we've got a timeout again. St. Mary, their first charge timeout of the half. Looked like we were coming out to punt. Maybe St. Mary wasn't expecting that. We'll uh, just take a quick break again and be back in a few. Many of you know that the Iton Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-22C.com. And Tabor did put a nice punnel. Wow, that was a, right in there. We got it right at the four, it looks like. Great job by uh, Helix getting that uh, punt down in there. Probably felt like he could uh, be a little bit more aggressive with that, with the strong wind. Well, it looks like Coach Gardner wanted to play the field position game, and now we'll see if that works out for him. Like we got to give there to uh, Cole Niket, the ball out to the, the junior running back out of uh, Anaheim, California, 5'10", 210 pounds, gain of about four, second and six, Spires. A lot of Blue Jays in there. St. Mary's running, uh, getting right back on the line and going again. Same thing, several Blue Jays in there again. Martin little Riggs Robin kind of came up to stopped a little bit of that momentum. He's tackled by number nine, Angel Sanchez, brings up third down and three. Yeah, this will be a big third down. Tabor fans, help the defense. Be good to see Tabor's defense get off the field right here. And we'll see if St. Mary's uh, maybe airs it out or they stick to that ground game. Back to pass, he's going to get it out to number one. Jordan Hill again. Giving him plenty of space out there to operate. 
at the Spires 16 First down yard Spires. Line, 17 yard line. There we go. Nice play outside there. I'm sorry. I thought that was number 22 in there for St. Mary's. That's actually number 21. That's Dratavius Martin, a freshman running back, 5'9", 180 out of Foxworth, Mississippi. And Jordan Sukow on that. Coming up and making a good tackle. And second and 12 for the Spires. Good pressure on the quarterback. Now we got a late flag coming There's in here, and I'm play. late flag, maybe a sideline warning. Seems a little bit late to throw a flag for pass interference. They are pointing towards Tabor on this, so I, after a great play by Jordan on that on that first down, I hope this doesn't. They are calling Defense. pass interference. Spot foul, automatic first down. I think they did call a pass. That was a pass interference call. It it like it might have been, maybe they the had the late flag for a holding in the secondary. It's kind of a costly penalty there after, like I said, a great play by Sukow on that. Absolutely. We've got Jertavius uh, Martin again on the carry there. Martin They're feeding the him quite a bit the on the early downs. Four yard gain brings up second and six. Four yards. Lepke in on that tackle. I know there was another lineman in down the middle. Not sure which one it was, but. RPO. Oh, Lepke, nice job. Yep. No, I was afraid of that. Yeah, that, that's, a, that's a horse collar penalty. Yep. He got him on the little bit of the back there, back of the shoulder pads. It's unfortunate. You get a great play and just got him right there enough to get that flag thrown. Number 13. Defense, 15 yards, automatic first down. So far, we've had uh, one pass play to get him the out of the deep. And then other than that, it's been a couple penalties that have hurt us on this one, two or three now. Yeah, not, not really helping ourselves much in that regard. Like I said uh, earlier, when we started the broadcast, the Blue Jays have, have kind of started most of the games in, in, in the hole um, and had to come back for a couple of the wins they've had. Pass up deep. Long pass. That's good. Some good Real coverage, good coverage there. there. Nice play by number by James Lang. James Lang on the, the defense. It looks pass like James Lang's uh, he, he's kind of settling in a little bit after that first play. Yeah, great coverage. I don't want to wanted to pass interference, but I think he did a nice job of reaching over the top and knocking that ball out. Absolutely. Going back to the running game here. Go nice play by Robin. Robin. Absolutely. Uh, Riggs is, is Riggs playing Robin that middle linebacker spot really well. Second and 11 for the Spires on their own. 30 on their own 44 yard line. Been doing a pretty good job. Um, the defensive line has not letting uh, some of those offensive linemen climb up to get their hands on uh, Riggs. And Big Juan up front there has really been sealing Third up that, that middle. I think he's been taking on two guys every time. Yeah, it's nice to have him back. He's uh, He's been out for 
probably five or six games this season, so it's good to see him out there and healthy. Stepping up. Oh! oh. Just off the hands. That pass falls incomplete. Uh, that looks Brings like number zero the that was the intended the uh, the target on team. that. I don't have him. Uh, that would be Garrett Carter. Okay. We had him listed as a, a defensive back. Vincent McTeague in punt formation for the Spires. I imagine this punt will probably be a, a, a booming punt with the, the wind at their back. Pushing the end zone. <laughs> Looks like they're going to let it go right into the end zone. That Good call, Robert. The end zone for a touchback. <laughs> First and ten for the Blue Jays on their own 20 yard line. We'll see what we have after the short break. Here with Tabor getting the ball back towards the end of this first quarter. Giving it to Sanchez at Renteria. Sorry about that. Andre Renteria with carry for a short gain brings up second and nine for the Blue Jays at the 21. I think they've uh, they've studied some film. Looks like the, the Blue Jays have, and they're really attacking the edges. Um, It'll kind of be something to watch, I think, this first half is just see if they keep attacking those edges. Maybe they're setting something up, um, or maybe that's just the, the, the part that they saw on film study that they think is uh, the best course of action. We've got another penalty off, or a false start there. I saw something that they're wanting to try and exploit. Number 55, offense, five-yard penalty. It's the whole guessing game of the football game, trying to outguess what the opponent's going to do each week. And they're back in their extra uh, offensive lineman set. Oh, nearly picked off just out of the hands and thrown it a little bit behind uh, Caleb Hoppus. Dodged a bullet right there. Not real fortunate. The offensive line had given good protection right there too, but the, yeah, the throw was just a little bit behind. The defensive back made a good job, a uh, good play undercutting that and kind of just sitting on that. We talked a little earlier about KCAC, the top of the conference. Kansas Wesleyan is playing Southwestern today for uh, the conference championship. So I mean, that game is 0-0 now, halfway through the first quarter. We got a check down here to Jackson, and uh, no gain yeah, looks like on the play. Maybe a yard. However, there's no gain on the play, bringing up fourth down for the Blue Jays. So we'll see if uh, uh, Hewitt can get us out of this uh, hole here. Wind is still gusting pretty good, so you have to keep that punt low. Did a nice job of that. That's about as good of a punt as you could uh, hope for right there. Oh. Great return there. I think that was number zero, Garrett Carter again. Got it right out to where the original line of scrimmage was. We got some yellow paint on the, on the carpet. The Tabor 21 yard line. At the 50 yard line. Usually that's uh, in the area of like a block in the back or something, right? Yep. So I think it's coming back. Well, Tabor got fortunate on that one, and so it looks like uh, the 
holding number 28 on the return team. 10 yards from the spot of the foul, first down. Yeah, we, we were fortunate on that play. Um, did change a little bit of that field position and saved from a big, big return. I've got to say, Grant, I, I do wish they would ban yellow shoes from players. <laughs> Anytime I see a player with yellow shoes, I think the flag is flying, and this number one has them, so there's several times I've almost said the flag is out. It's his shoes. Right. <laughs> Those are the exact same color, yeah, they too. they are. Um, oh, nice tackle there by Parker. Yep, it held him to about a gain of three. Looked like a, they've got a different running back in now. Looking for that number. Oh, that's number 22. So that's Cole Nakit. Looking to see where some of their Kansas kids they've got here. They've got a right guard, number 68, Gabbard, senior from Horton, Kansas, on their line. It looks like we had a little jump, jumping early on the offensive line there. False start, number 60, offense. Five-yard penalty, second down. This is about the most penalties uh, that I can recall in recent history. And this is only the first a, quarter. Not even through that first quarter. Second 12 on the Spires, 33. Defense is only rushing four, but they put some pressure on. Grimes on the scramble. Yeah, Jaleel Grimes was able to break outside and pocket and still get a gain of a, a couple there. Yeah, third and five. Forced him to roll out, but he still gained, he still got his yards. A lot of those times, uh, that, that's where, where a lot of the dangerous plays happen, where they're rolling out and kind of improvising and um, definitely an athlete can make some of those things happen. Well, uh, well you played Bring offensive line, Grant. You understand. I was a defensive lineman, but that's a, it's a whole different – I mean, I enjoyed being a defensive lineman, and you didn't know where I was going. And it made – I always thought offensive line has to be the most difficult position on the field because you've got to protect – and, and you have no control. <laughs> you, you're, um, you're right. That's, uh, no one understands that, but I think it is the most difficult position to play is an offensive line. It's, it's one of the, uh, well, it is the most unnatural position um, to basically let someone attack you, and you have to be in the, in the, in the middle of them trying to get to the quarterback. And, uh, yeah, it, it, it's definitely tough. Um, pass protection Tabor is one of the toughest things to do and line. discipline yourself in because most of those movements are just not – they're not natural movements. They're not natural leverage points. Well, and it's just one of those where you got to set up and you can't tell the other guy where to go, but you've got to be willing to go left. You've got to be willing to go right. You've got to be willing to go back and forward. And if the defensive person wants to go whichever way, you've got to – Dick, you've got to go with it. Absolutely. So when I hear people complain about an offensive lineman not blocking, it just kind of almost makes me mad because I'm like, well, I, I played defense and I know what I know what they have to go through, and it's just ridiculous. And so, yeah, that's right. The, the I think one of the things that maybe goes unnoticed or, or just unknown is the relationship an offensive lineman has to have with. Um, the guy playing next to him. Oh, 
you have to have, like you said, we don't know where the, the, the defensive lineman is going to go, what gap they're going to rush, if there's a linebacker coming on a blitz or a stunt, all those things. And you got to know that the guy next to you is on the same page as you. Well, exactly. And a unique thing, partially about with Tabor here, is, uh, you know, you got two, two offensive linemen here that actually played high school together. And then if you look at the, even the ages of these, so like the, you've got the two Utah guys, and then you've got the ages. Do we have even two, two other freshmen and a sophomore starting? I mean, the age of this group, if they could stay together in about two years, this could be a, a top-notch group working together. Absolutely. Uh, and, and a phenomenal, a phenomenal group. Because like you said, a group that understands and thinks together could be a unstoppable group. Well, we've got a... We've got a protection breakdown there. Uh, we've got a sack given up on third down. That was a big third down, lost about seven yards. Looked like that was number 27 um, for St. Mary's coming in on that, Hunter Patterson. Uh, he's another Kansas guy there from Lenexa, Kansas, 6'2", 210 sophomore. But even like there, a lot of times someone will say that might be an offensive line, but that could have been a running back. It could have been a... Uh, uh, someone else that's supposed to pick that up. Sorry, I'm just kind of sticking up a little bit here for that as a, as a as someone that sees a little bit more of the picture. Yeah, a lot, a lot of people don't realize um, for most offenses, the 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 uh, um, the offensive linemen they're not necessarily calling all the protections. Um, you know, a lot, it depends on the offense and that system. But a lot of times, the quarterback's actually setting the protection. Um, I'm not sure what Tabor is set up for, but yeah, it, it's definitely, there's communication, teamwork, trust, all of those things have to come together and be coordinated to have success. Absolutely. And I will tell you one thing too, um, hey, Robert. Three, six. False start. No, we're false start here. Offense, five yard penalty. So, uh, um, uh, Interesting fact about football and the position names. Um, so if you notice, defensive linemen and offensive linemen, they're, they're the only position names that actually use the word man. <laughs> I like the way you think on that. <laughs> so, yeah, that, 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 that puts it a little bit in perspective there. Well, now I'm going to get texts from other people. Caleb, <laughs> no. on the carry, brings up. Second down We've got a new running back in there for St. Mary. Look like number 36. Uh, that would be uh, Caleb Big Pond from Glenpool, Oklahoma. That's the name I have on that one. I've run several through there today. We're going up top again here. See if Lane can. There we go. We got a little bit of hand slap in there. Uh, good coverage. Did not call it. Brings up third down. Good coverage. Got his head around. Got his hand on the ball. Really good play. You take away that play action. First play of the game for St. Mary's. Outside of that, it's been a penalties. I'm not sure. I'm going to pull up some stats here in a little bit. It's been very minimal. You're right, you're right. We got another play action there. Looking for that short dump off. That pass falls incomplete for the Spires. And Lepke, uh, Wyatt Lepke provided a little bit of pressure on that just to hurry that throw. Intended for Brian Gudka. Or Gudka. And the Spires run out the If you're one of the parents listening to this broadcast and I butcher your name, I do apologize. Same for me. We'll do our best. Not intending. If you want to butcher my name, you can too. A lot of people do. <laughs> a little directional punt. See if he can get it to go out. Oh wow, that looks like a beautiful. Oh man. Did looks he? Looks like that's. Uh, he's gonna call he it down did. at the one. Wow. Fantastic that punt. punt. Goes out of bounds at the <laughs> inside the one yard line, where Tabor will take Good over. Good coverage on um, that punt. First Getting it downed in there. 
both by the punter and by the guy that dove across there to get it out of bounds. You want to watch that again. It's number 89 or 8830. 30. It's number 30. He did. He stopped that right there. Good heads up play. Way to be prepared for them. Well, the good thing is uh, this happened at the end of the quarter, so we get to uh, flip sides of the field and uh, have the wind at our backs now versus in our face. Can we see the play action play that they did to us now and hit one for 91 yards or 99 yards down the field? Boy, that'd be a sight for sore eyes, I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'd love to see that. Or a 99-yard run by Renteria right up the gut. Well, I would take it. Thank you for supporting. Imagine we might just get a quarterback sneak. It's actually at like the half yard line is where they've say, got it. If they've got stats with percentages, it would be a or a decimal places it would have it. They're pretty much in the box, everybody. Yep, he's gonna find uh, uh, Villarreal. Find the little, little sliver of a, a, a gap there for about two yards, maybe getting a little bit of breathing room. Yep. Brings up second and seven for Tabor. I wouldn't be surprised if they maybe even do that again. <laughs> you know, neither offense has really moved the ball well, so I do think. Something simple and, oh. Hard count, they're going to give it to Renteria. And I'm surprised there was no flag on that. Renteria they look close, maybe he got back in time. Line for the Blue Jays. Brings up third down, and that looks a long three. It was a good play there, being able to get a little bit more breathing room. Usually at this point, when you're pinned back that far, your, your one goal is just a first down. Well, now having to win, too, you're also thinking field position, too, so you've got a good punter. I think for the first week or two of the season, our punter was actually nationally ranked. Yeah. Top, top 10, top 5, I'm not sure. Uh -oh. oh, we've got a little uh -oh. bit of a crease there, and they get a first down out to the 20. Good, uh, good blocking and good run by Renteria to find that cutback lane. I was going to say one or two guys. Curtis made that saving tackle from St. Mary's there, but... Yeah, Renteria's got some um, breakaway speed too, so he's taken quite a few, quite a few plays, uh, four or five touchdown runs of, I think, 30 plus yards this year. He's been fun to watch, that's for sure. Oh, a dangerous throw there too. He had number 27, I think, in coverage again. That was Hunter P uh, Patterson. Almost had a little bit of a opportunity at a pick uh, right there. I say he he probably looked at the end zone a little bit. I think he was thinking pick six. You know these games against uh, St. Mary's traditionally um, have always been really tough fought games and uh, um, really good games to watch because both of these coaches uh, they know each other so well. Um, they've been in the KCAC for so long, and I know they're great friends uh, off the field as well. Was well, St. Mary's here when you played? Yeah, uh, so Lance Henson, he was the he was the uh, head coach whenever I played back in 03 to 06. Okay, and I believe he he left for a, a, a another stint at another college or maybe a high school. I'm not really sure, um, and then he came back. Uh, a couple of years later, kind of similar to Coach Gardner. Okay. Uh, Coach Gardner went and coached at Malone in Ohio uh, for about four years and then came back uh, to revitalize the, the program at Tabor and eventually led him to three straight conference championships. Yeah. When I played St. Mary's was Dodge City. Ooh, wide open. Wide open, wow. Angel Sanchez is going <laughs> to take it in for a touchdown. touchdown. Angel Sanchez, touchdown. I didn't get a look at yards. 
If that was a coverage <laughs> breakdown or a bite on a play action, I didn't get a look at that. I was watching the offensive lineman. <laughs> well, he ran in, ran across the field, and no one went over to no cover him. No one picked him. him up. But he ran right across, almost like he was in motion. But yeah. Extra point for the Blue Jays. Well, that's a good play. That's a great play. I mean, starting on your uh, half yard line and uh, going all the way across the field for a touchdown. Um, that's phenomenal. Let's we'll see if we can knock this through to tie up the ball game. Well, that is the place to be to have a big play. So we've had two long plays from about the same spot. Absolutely. We'll take a quick break and come back for a kickoff. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Just like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm Agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. At Bomb. All right, back here after a great play. Don't know if Coach of St. Mary is very happy after that one. Yeah, these, uh, uh, and they're two defensive minded coaches as well, uh, Henson and Gardner. Um, it's always fun to watch kind of the chess match happen. Um, and it'll be, it'll be interesting to kind of see how these teams adjust as they keep going. Um, yeah, very good 7-7 uh, seven, seven ball game here <laughs> and two big plays and a lot of penalties. <laughs> Both coaches very frustrated with those two big plays. St. Mary's been pretty consistent in that two and th three wide receiver set. Um, they don't use much of a tight end, it seems like, at least right now. Got a timeout on the field. I don't know what they're talking to number one here for. You can see I the official. Game oh. clock operator, please reset the game clock to 12.18. The play clock will start on my whistle. Going to get two seconds back on the game clock. I always kind of like when officials do that because it gives me confidence that they know what is. That they're paying attention they're a little paying bit. paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I laugh at it, but yet it always, yes, you're right. It does make you, makes you think they are. Oh, nice play. Did you see Robin come up, Robin? Yep. I always say, I'm sorry, is it Robin or Robin? Uh, Robin. Robin. Second and ten. Yeah, Riggs, uh, nice he, he came up. He's been, ha he, I mean, he's probably got four or five tackles uh, so far. We'll get stats here at halftime, but, um, yeah, he's having a great game. He really stepped up in there. Watch this again. Just came flying up in there. Yeah, great job scraping. Yeah, really good. And then I think at the bottom of the pile was... Big Juan again. Yeah, absolutely. The unsung hero right there. This is a good strong run. Yeah, it was. Is that 21? Uh, is that Martin back in there? Yep. Yep. Yeah, he's a good good running back. It, it, it's tough to kind of look at these rosters. All these teams that we've had this year, um, the, the team seems so young because they've all got eligibility. Um, yeah because of the COVID season. And that's, it, it's just gonna be really cool to see how that plays out as far as the uh, students sticking around for a fifth year of eligibility. Well, that's true, that's true. Well, I come back to Martin again, we got a flag in there. Usually There's that's kind of a play. hold nice area.
Look like they're backing back. up. Holding. Number 68. Offense. The penalty is declined. Fourth down. They're going to force that punt right there. That's cool. Good job by the nice Blue Jay defense, defense getting off the field. The really nice job. At their 32-yard line, that brings on the punt. Yeah, team. going back to the fifth year uh, of eligibility that, that uh, has resulted from COVID-19 was – uh, I think that there's going to be an advantage for a lot of the schools that are that have grad programs. Mm -hmm. um, that's something that uh, at Tabor we uh, have worked on and implemented uh, a couple of new grad programs over the last uh, two years, uh, MED and then a, a Master's of Business Administration and uh, Sports Management and Leadership. And uh, we're getting quite a bit of uh, – interest from those students that uh, want to play that uh, fifth year of eligibility so well, that's a big deal that's a big deal to be able to keep them it, it also opens up a lot of uh, other recruiting possibilities too mm -hmm. you have a lot of other universities that may not have grad programs um, and you might get some of those fifth year transfers into a grad program that have already got a bachelor's degree yep. Renteria, look for that cutback lane, not quite there. Renteria with the carry for the Blue Jays, picks up about... Looks like about a second and eight, maybe second and nine. Bench, something like that. Brings up second and eight from the Tabor 39. Tackle by there, number 38. Timeout. Trying to look for that. Injury. Ooh, Shin, Shinadun Nwadik. Oh, I'm sorry, Mom and Dad. <laughs> can do a better name on that. Uh, Wadaki? I, I would say, uh, yeah, Wadaki. Chinadu Wadaki. Looks like we had an injury timeout. Uh, Number 41, Swanwick. I think he's from Oswego. We'll take a quick break. The Tabor College J Shop is selling items through halftime by the west entrance of the stadium. Check out their great selection of Tabor College gear. Second down and nine for the Blue Jays from their own 38 yard line. Looks like they're giving the receivers plenty of cushion out there, 10, 12 yards. That's an impressive play right there. Wow. Hey. I tell you what. You see those feet move? I uh, <laughs> absolutely, I was, I'm fired up about that. Williford, man, if we get a replay, watch the center Williford pulling around, Look leading up, head inside, boom, Look get that, that cut block. That's how you draw it up. Williford, man, you, you yeah. rock. If you uh, could only be up here and see his excitement. <laughs> An offensive lineman getting going up here. That is fantastic. That, you know, honestly, <laughs> it, it, it takes a special kind of a player to be able to pull as a center. Yes, um, it does. They're not, not, not a lot are capable of that. Very few offenses actually pull a center. You really only, I, I, you know, I only see that typically at some of the uh, Division One or Pro levels um, where you have, you know, really elite athletes yeah. um, on the uh, offensive lines. And not even most well, of them will even do well, that. Well, it's just rare. Yep. I mean, to, to have them think about snapping it and then going. Um, most people just want them to be able to snap it. That's right. And there Good it goes again. by uh, Renteria there. Another Looks like that O-line line has got things going, and, and Renteria. And and Andre Renteria brings up another Tabor first down on the Spires 30-yard line. I think there was a – watch at the end of this play here. I'm not sure. There was a little extra twisting at the end. Yeah. yeah, did you see that? Yeah, that that uh, that kind of looked like pretty unnecessary. I hope that doesn't continue. Files got the ball now. It's his first carry of the night. He's gonna pick up four. 
File with carry for the Blue Jays. File's a little four, little shifty, a little shifty change of pace guy. Um, fantastic receiver. And he, he can stick his nose in there and get a couple of yards, too. He's another one of these guys from McPherson that's really contributed to this team. Yeah, There's been right. a bunch of these guys from McPherson that have made this team um, just explosive plays. Absolutely. Here and there. I mean, just always just time after time. These young guys, we had uh, Hoppus is from McPherson, File, uh, Jayton Alexander. Oh, Angel Sanchez. Sanchez well, that was an exciting two-yard run to, <laughs> to watch right there. Three on he got the some height. He did on that jet third sweep. Down and four. Third down and Broke a couple six. of tackles and hurdled and fought hard for that yard, yard or two. Yeah, I think they were paying attention when he went in motion yes. that time. <laughs> Made a guy miss right there. It's a nice drive we're putting together right now. Sees it. I think he's going to at a yard or two short. Good pass protection by the offensive line and, and good coverage by the uh, secondary of St. Mary's. Just had to pull it down and try to get what they could. Looks like they're going to go for it. Keeping the offense out there. Get a little excitement out there in Blue Jay land. For those of you interested in the Southwestern KW game, it's 7-6 KW midway through the second quarter. That is for the conference championship. That's right. Uh, um, Southwestern had beat Bethel head to head. I think so. Get around that corner. Looks like Renteria is going to uh, pick it up. I, was that a direct snap or was that a handoff? Uh, you know, now that you say it, I really didn't even see that. I think from the angle we were at, I couldn't quite see. Renteria with a nice run for a first down and 10 for the Blue Jays inside the red zone. First yeah, for that fourth 10, down, they went back to the heavy set, kind of overload extra offensive linemen. You know, a lot of times we run opposite of that, too. So, uh, kind of fools them a little bit. I got some, got some yellow trash in there, too. Yeah. I think that might have been a hold on uh, maybe queering. Holding number 72. Offense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot. I'm sorry, I think that's Jay Hayes. Yeah. That'll move the ball back to the Spires 30-yard line. Tabor will have first and 20. Another uh, interesting there. fact about offensive line. There is holding on every single play. Yes, there is. <laughs> that, that's, uh, that, that's, that, yeah, it, it's. The great offensive linemen are the ones that actually can hold and get away with it. I was going to say, it's only holding if you get caught. Right. As a defensive lineman, it, it only frustrated you when you couldn't get them, get them to break loose. A number 55, just uh, he, he had a great play there. Dennis Brown? Uh, yeah, coming in for the sack. That was a big sack. He had a pretty good little push-pull yeah. rip move. Um, to get around uh, Bowens there at right tackle. Well, that's part of when I coached football. That's one of the things I taught because when I played it, it frustrates you to start with. But then when you learn that, you know, it's going to happen, it's part of my job to get rid of that hold. Yep, absolutely. And when it, you quit letting it frustrate you, then you start getting better at it. There's Renteria. Oh, that was a nice, nice run. blocking, Good nice block. run. We got another penalty, though. Looks like probably another hold, I think. Oh. Once again, you said it in the first quarter. I don't know if there's a quote on. <laughs> there's a lot of flags. Yeah, there, there's <laughs> just a lot. We have to change batteries on the officials mic at halftime. <laughs> right. <laughs> 
Holding, number 61. Offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot to foul. Replay the down. It'd be interesting to see that replay if we can. Maybe we can catch a peek at the hold. The Spire 39 yard line. Second and 29 for Tabor. Yeah, it, it's some of those I think uh, might be a little bit chintzy. I know. Um, it, 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 the tough ones I have a problem with are when your hands are inside and, you know, you got to be careful about the defensive lineman turning away from you. That's where it's all the look. That's where your footwork and uh, your hips and your body positioning and hand position really come into play is, is if you can kind of move with them. I mean, you're even taught. I mean, I'm even taught as a defensive lineman. I can even look back without even being held, and I'll probably get a call because if, I, if I'm uh, locked in with you and I turn and look as I'm going to running away, I'm probably going to get a call against you. That's right. Um, and I think they're taught that in the NFL too. So there's, there's some tricks and gimmicks that um, officials have to be aware of too. Uh oh, that looks like he's just gonna go. Tried to throw it for Sanchez. Villarreal's pass falls incomplete, bringing up fourth down. Not from the really DJs catchable there. From no. the 36 of the Spires. On comes the punt team for the Blue Jays. Those penalties kind of took us out of field goal range too, and we. Yeah, it's pretty tough. For your, your uh, you know, you're, you're running the ball. Well, I guess you, yeah, you're running the ball pretty well, but you're getting holding penalties yeah, too. So, so I don't know if you are running the ball well <laughs> or not, but um, you know, Renteria seems like he's got a uh, pretty fired up for the oh. day. Oh, almost had that Jackson, almost that downed it right the there. For a touchback. I'm gonna get it out to the 20. The and will take over on their own 20 yard line. First and 10. It's about a 10, 15 yard net punt. We got three and a little under four minutes left till halftime. Good defensive stand here. Oh, are they marking it back at? Since he touched it there? How does that, I'm not quite following this. I don't. I'm guessing St. Mary's coach is pretty fired up on the other sideline, too. I can see him talking to the official. Yep. Okay, there they come. Looks like Niquette's back in there running back. And now they've gone to a double tight set. This is a new 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 personnel grouping for them. Got a five man, six man front for the Blue Jays and they're just gonna run an inside zone play. Riggs steps up again and the first down carry for the Spires goes for Once again you see Big Juan and Cole Long getting up out of the bottom of the pile. And Cat getting up slow there. Good to see him jog off, though. Hopefully, he had just a little tweaked ankle or something. Yeah. On the tackle for the Blue Jays. Last week, Riggs was the leading tackler with 12 against Bethany. A little high there. And that was out to Carter. Complete for the Spires brings up. Third down and six. Or is that number eight? I, it looks like a zero to me. Mm. Carter. I think that is. Yeah, that's Carter. It's third and six. Another opportunity to get off the field here. Get some good field position again. We got motion guy. Almost. Your middle screen. That one kind of caught us. That pass, that screen pass. Oh, goes. man. He's got a guy down oh, here, and he down. is not, he is in some pain. He's 
Big 68 here. He's from Holton, There's Kansas, I think. Yeah, Michael Gabbard. Horton. Yeah, and we'll take a injury timeout with them. Gamer College would like to welcome our special guest to the game today. The families of our seniors. At Baumgars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Game clock operator, please reset the game clock to 2 minutes and 52 seconds. Thank you. Gabbard uh, got some help getting off the field. It's at least good he uh, was getting off the field, but it's never good to see somebody hurt. Looks like a, a right leg of some injury of some sort. Yep. Lepke makes the tackle there. Yeah. On uh, Niquette. Yeah, looks like Niquette's Wide back in. Uh, for the Blue Jays. Short game brings that's in good. He went scores. out earlier with a tweaked leg or something it's like he's back back in and feeling good now it doesn't seem like st mary's in too big of a hurry yet there's a good tackle there is that number uh 30 was that uh stick on that Oliver brings up third down and five for the that starters. ours Keyshawn Oliver that's right well you stuck that head <laughs> he did oh, I was gonna feel that in the ribs in the morning the freshman timeout Oklahoma City Tabor yeah. their first charge time out of the half I'll tell you our high school team went up to Beloit last night we were in the sectional round of playoffs and man our kids we started off a little slow, but uh, we have a, we had a great group. But uh, we're down 32-7 at half. I don't know if you heard about how we did and came back and lost 32-27. Wow! Held them held them without any points in the second half. Shut them down in the second half, and you know we if we just uh, you know just a few things would have went a little different. But a boy has such a man. They had a powerful front line. They had a running back that we had a hard time stopping. But we just uh, it just took us a little too long to get get kind of adjusted to the game. I think. And then, yeah. But I'd yeah. love to see some of these players out on this field. 
Absolutely. We were talking about that earlier. Yeah, there's there there's a talented group here in Hillsboro for sure. Hopefully we can get a couple of them here at Tabor next so fall. Yeah, it would be, it'd be fun to see. Tabor's going to get the ball back. I think we forced a Tabor's punt there. Deep for the Blue Jays file It'd be good Sanchez. to see if we can get a, get a return. Maybe uh, um, especially Angel Sanchez, if that goes to him. He's had a, a lot of really uh, big plays on special teams this year. And, you know, I think when we played friends, he was special teams player of the week. Well, last week, wasn't Franklin uh, Miller the – I know it's not Sanchez, but Franklin Miller was the player of the week for special teams, I think. That's right. And I think he got hurt either in the game or in practice. Okay. Um, but, yeah, he's he's not out there today. Yeah, I was wondering, oh, that's right. I did notice that. Well, just a few stats as we get closer to uh, halftime here. Um, Villarreal is 6 for 11 with 142 yards approaching halftime with one touchdown. Renteria has 74 yards rushing. So hopefully he can add to that here before half. Yeah, absolutely. they got a minute 42 and two timeouts. Let's see if they're coming out. We get a timeout here. And we're having clock problems again. <laughs> you hand it off to be a real. So it looks like um, before that play got off uh, and he whistled it dead, looked like we had a, a pass play called. And something must have changed because I think we just decided to run it and see what happens. And if maybe there was a big play, <laughs> then we might try to go into a two-minute. But it doesn't, doesn't seem like we're in an incredible hurry yet. Oh, there's a face mask. And then a fumble. Which... They didn't call the face mask. That's kind of strange. They say his hand didn't. Hmm. Well, and there is no more five-yard face mask. Um, there's no. Uh, uh, so it's just one. I believe it's all a personal foul face mask, whether okay. it's uh, kind of that incidental one or if it's a, a full one. Kind of a chess game of the clock right now. Each coach, I think, is trying to decide whether. Looks like we're going to kind of be happy with letting it go and uh, yep. probably let it run down here and then just run it again. I imagine if either coach wanted to time out, they would have taken it. I'm going a heavy line <coughs> to the right side. And <coughs> looks like giving it off to Renteria and got a little gap and got a first down. Yeah, he and the offensive line have been running really well. Um, when there haven't been penalties, they've been they've been running really well. It'd be good to see them come out and kind of stick with that again. We're not even going to take a shot before half, but it is going to take us into half at seven to seven. We'll we'll be back in a few. Uh, join you a little bit before the start of the second half and. Uh, get some stats. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. 
Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm Agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or bodybuild, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. I'ma take it.
Hit the ground running. You hear the sounds coming. You felt the ground move. Yeah. Bad news. Uh, said I feel brand new, feel brand new, we hit the stage, we ready to raise, we thunder up, thunder up, stay in your place, we get in your face, we thunder up. Exchange. Media moguls Floyd Wonder, another richest men in the world. That's right, forget about Carnegie, forget about Ford, forget about Rockefeller. Floyd Wonder has the Midas touch, sources say they're worth millions. Someday billions, look out folks, here they come. I don't really care, I'ma be a and agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at eitzenagency.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit flemingsministoreall.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. 
Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at hillsboroughfordks.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money.
Sooner or later, you might need some extra storage space. When that day comes, Fleming's Mini Store All is ready and waiting. Fleming's Mini Store All has five locations and has been serving the Hillsborough and Marion area since 1990. They've got a variety of storage size options and can even handle boats and RVs. To learn more, just visit Fleming'sMiniStoreAll.com or give them a call at 620-382-5550. Fleming's Mini Store All, the solution for your storage problems. Hillsboro Ford is your local, family-owned and operated full-service Ford dealer, serving Marion County and the surrounding areas. Come and see us at Hillsboro Ford for all of your automotive needs. Whether it's purchasing a new or used vehicle or visiting our well-trusted service department, our staff is committed to give you a top-notch experience. We service every make and model and can handle all service jobs, including tires. We're at 202 South Main Street in downtown Hillsboro and online at HillsboroFordKS.net. Hillsboro Ford, where service makes the difference. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic is a supporter of Tabor College and proud to treat our Tabor students and athletes. Panzer Chiropractic Clinic offers affordable chiropractic care for the entire family. We offer spinal adjustments and cold laser therapy, decompression and flexion distraction therapy, and are board certified in acupuncture as well as DOT certified. Come see us at 122 South Main Street in Hillsboro or call Panzer Chiropractic Clinic for an appointment today at 620-947-3157. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce these costs. Give us a call at the Eitzen Agency to discuss this valuable coverage for your business at 580-227-2553 or find us online at EitzenAgency.com. Think about how good it feels when people really get you. Like the friends who come over when a big game is on, the neighbors next door who always bring your favorite buffalo dip, your in-laws who know you need silence during the clutch plays, and everyone who knows about your special post-win fist bump. It's kind of like having a State Farm agent like Paul Brooks. Paul is here to get to know you and understand your life, so he can help make it easy for you to protect what's important. Get an agent that gets you and your fist bumps. Call State Farm agent Paul Brooks in Wichita at 316-721-8181. Welcome back for the second half. Uh, Tabor College versus St. Mary's. Score was 7-7. And uh, I've got some stats and updates. We'll start with our, our Tabor guys. Uh, passing stats, we had... Uh, Gustavo Villarreal, 6 of 11, 142 yards and a touchdown. And uh, rushing, Andre Renteria led the uh, Tabor Blue Jays with rushing, 14 attempts, 85 yards, uh, long of 17. Uh, he's averaging 6 yards a carry. Good half for him. Receiving, uh, Caleb Hoppus, uh, 1 for 25 yards. Uh, Raquez Jackson, 2 for 30. And Angel Sanchez, kind of the highlight of that first half, uh, the scoring play, one reception, 80 yards, and that touchdown. Um, yeah, it's a really good half for the Blue Jays to start off, um, especially with defense, holding uh, St. Mary to seven points and then running the ball. Renteria has had a lot of success. Yeah, I mean, you look at it, they, they really did. You know, St. Mary's, you come out right away, and they scored, I mean, within two minutes. I mean, they held Tabor right away, but then they took the first play off that uh, play action and scored right away. But, you know, so you take a look at their stats, their uh, passing, Jaleel Grimes was 4 for 11 for 88 yards. And that first pass play was uh, uh, 50, no, I'm trying to look what that was. That was a 66-yard uh, pass yep. to Jordan Hill. So out of those four completions, the first one was 66 yards. He's had 22 yards after that. Um, Rushing-wise for St. Mary's, Jartervius Jeter, Martin, eight carries, 16 yards. Uh, Cole Niquette, three carries for eight yards. Caleb Big Pond, one carry for 10 yards. And Jaleel Grimes, two for three yards. Receiving, Orion Warmly, one for four. Jordan Hill, 2 for 72, and Jeterius Martin, 1 for 12. Uh, 
punting wise, five for two oh four for Vincent Matigue and, and both teams have been have both been punting <laughs> a decent amount. Yeah. A lot of three and outs. Um and uh so forth. Defensive wise, um both teams been on the field back and forth. Um you know, it's been a back and forth game. Yeah, absolutely. Getting back to the the penalties too. Um I this kind of seems Maybe there, it seemed like there were more, but uh, St. Mary's had three penalties for 54 yards. Um, Tabor had five for 64 yards. That's it. And I think maybe that we're, we're probably feeling that way because hmm. the bulk of them were in that first quarter. Well, it did. I, was, I would have guessed we would have been in that eight to ten. <laughs> That's Each. what it, it, it sure <laughs> seemed like that. Um, but, yeah, that, that, uh, that does seem a little bit short, but. And you look at the maybe the bigger uh, um, stat up there team-wise, uh, total offensive plays and yards. We had 25 plays for 125 yards uh, for St. Mary. And we had, uh, for the Blue Jays, 34 plays for 214 yards, um, outgaining St. Mary in total yards by about 90 uh, yards in that first half. Okay, we've got a pooch kick into the wind there. Uh, as fair the caught. is fair caught for the Spires at their own 44-yard line, where they will start first and ten. Trying to catch them off guard, and maybe they weren't going to call a, a fair catch, but St. Mary, St. Mary's was prepared for that. They did. Spires maybe number 58's the dream there. He got a he got to catch a kickoff there. That's right. Fair catch. Yep. And that's one of those things you only see at, at, at football practices when the coach says, hey, if uh, this lineman catches a, a, a punt, we're not going to sprint, <laughs> do sprints at the end of it. <laughs> that's right. By the way, at a halftime, Southwestern is still leading KW 13-7 to for the KCAC championship. Gonna take a deep shot here. Reminder of the first half there, the first quarter. That's what they did the first quarter down this sideline, except to uh, number one. That one was to number 80. Yeah, we haven't called the name much was over that, there. Was that 80 or 88? That was, that was 80. It looked like that's uh, Cole Adder. Adder. Uh, again, we apologize yeah. if we're getting these names wrong. Freshman wide receiver, 6'2", 175 pounds out of St. Joe, Missouri. And off to Big, is this Big Pond? Yep, uh, number 36, Big Pond. It was a nice run. Found a cutback lane. Number 27, Ray Pearl on the tackle, but that is a first, first down. down getting over into the Blue Jay 40. territory. They're hurrying it up, getting back on the ball. Another handoff to Big Pond. He kind of skips around for uh, three, four yards. They're using their up front line. Their line is big up front. Um, I was just looking up front there at that uh, at the size of them, and we're talking three, three hundred five, three hundred, three sixty, two eighty. As a fronting, if the is the projected starters, I'm not sure if that's all the correct guys, but that's a big front line. That <laughs> is, they are definitely some big guys. Another shot here. Wide, he he got by him. He was open. That pass falls incomplete for the Spires, bringing up third down and seven. Yeah, that was Hill from the Tabor 37-yard line. Yeah, the way this wind kind of gusts, that makes those deep balls um, probably pretty tough to, to gauge what kind of touch you need to put on them. Yeah. Third and seven. I'm going to pass it. Yeah, he's, he's just... Uh, Getting a little too much air on these throws. Grimes is at the Tabor 37-yard line. Airing it out quite a bit. It looks like maybe a an adjustment they want to go back to from half is trying to stretch the field and get get those vertical 
uh, routes going. A few more scores from around the KCAC. Uh, McPherson is leading Sterling 30 to 14 in the third quarter. Avila 20 to 20 to zero over Friends. Deep for the Blue Jays. Ottawa's 33 to four at halftime over uh, Bethany. I don't know how many times I've ever said the words four at a football game, but That's I just odd. said it. Four, 34 to four. And uh, still, like I said, Southwestern 13-7, Kansas Wesleyan. And I think Bethel is playing uh, West Texas A&M, and I don't have any information on that one. Yeah, West Texas, that's a, a, a pretty strong Division II school, um, NCAA Division II. Yeah, that, that would be a big win if they could get a, a would. Division II win. Um, yeah, maybe see if we can get a score on that to provide later. Tabor's putting them all in the box and going to see if they can run up the gut. And they did get about three. French Rent three up, again, up the middle for a gain of three. Brings up second and seven for the Blue Jays. You know, Usher tight ends coming out and files going on. A little two back set. Maybe that split set they've been doing. Still going to have their extra linemen out there. And file is going to go go forward for about four or five yards. Nice extra push by that file with carry by the whole front games. there. It is. Third down. That's good to see. To well, go. maybe they're going to mark him down a little file shorter than I thought. Line. Well, about three, third and four. Apparently Bethel played West Texas at 11 a.m. this morning, and they did not fare too well. They lost 52 to nine. Mm. And that's at West at West Texas. At West Texas and Canyon, Texas. I think that maybe that is close to El Paso. I'm not sure. Yep, nope, tried to uh, just go back to that run and no gain. We're going to have to punt it away. See if uh, Healy can, can bail us out again with a good punt. We'll be against the wind, so... There's a kind of a double way. If you go low, you're going to have a short hang time or a uh, not very long hang time, and that gives a returner more time. Yeah, that's right. And that's that's a it's about as good of a punt as you can get. You try to stop a return here. Did a good job there, Jackson pushing him or forcing him out of bounds. Hill with the punt return. He goes out of bounds at the It'll be good to be able to have the wind at our backs in the fourth quarter. And St. Mary's will probably try to keep taking advantage of having the wind at their backs. See if they keep trying to attack deep. Pond again, and we've got some. It looked like we had a. It's a nice first down run, but there's a flag on the play. Holding there, looked like Jawan Thompson had got hold. Everybody's walking back real quick. Holding, number 79, offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot, the foul, replay the down. Well, that didn't look like 10 yards. Looks like they miscounted there. Or is that a spot, spot foul? He said from the spot of the foul, so. And they spotted that, I see.
I think he's been a handful for that offensive line today. And there he is on the tackle again. He's been down there with Cole Long, and Cole Long's been Big down there too. Carries the ball for the Spires, picks up three, brings up third down and 15 for the Spires. Tackle on the play by number eight, Parker Folks. Folks in on that too, and Good to see some of those gang tackles. That uh, the nickname that defense had back when I played for Coach Gardner was the the blue blue cloud. <laughs> the blue cloud. There it you would go. cover everyone like a cloud. <laughs> we got a big play there. Was that Lepke? That Lepke, I think, and and there's Long in the back. Yeah, well, that that would have been his second big tackle if that first one uh, had that horse collar. Yep. But no, that was huge by Lepke getting back there and. Because they were running that reverse. Yeah, he's been kind of interesting to watch this year. He's, he's probably the only player on that defense that has played pretty much a defensive line position, a linebacker, and a corner and safety uh -huh. all in one season. Pretty unique athlete. And there he got it again. Nice job by Parker. Well, this has been a little bit feisty on this. Uh, there's been some talking, I think, a little bit on this series by. I think there's been some jawing going on. <laughs> that looks like it. Both, team won, both teams want to end with a win today. Absolutely. That's a, that's a fantastic way to be able to end your season on a win, especially for Tabor on senior day. Yep. I was going to go in the end zone. Ball goes into the end zone for first and 10 for Tabor at their own 20 yard line. We'll see if they come back out and run. Last drive we started off with three straight runs. Came up a little bit short. See if they go back to that, or maybe they uh, get via Real kind of moving out on a little play action bootleg type of type of thing, and maybe catch St. Mary's thinking that we're not going to throw into the wind. Thing is, he can throw it. He's got an arm to do it. Right. Oh, and I think he had he had Hoppus coming across, or no, that was Sanchez coming across the middle there. That's right, and then that was Dennis Brown Jr. again. We've called his name a couple of times, getting a, getting one of his paws on it. Yep. Kind of disrupting that, yeah, that yeah. play there. And that actually, and it, it might end up being a good thing for Tabor, because there was a lot of white jerseys around. Mm -hmm. You can still see that wind really blowing that official's uniform down there in the middle. Absolutely. So the leaves coming across the field. Oh, oh. And he was there. Won. We go. Uh, get a nice little push and There's pull. There's the first down. <laughs> That's a great job. You gotta love those plays. Uh, Andre Renteria keeps his feet moving. You got a nice scrum going. Yep. Andre's got some powerful legs, and he just keeps everything rolling. And that. They're getting a they're getting a seven man box every time there with St. Yep. Mary, so it's it's still a, it's a pretty good accomplishment when you're when you're running the ball. Well, I mean, you know our offensive line is not huge compared to what these others. I mean, we're talking two thirty, two seventy five, fifty five. That's um, right. Here goes Renteria again. Just a gain of about thirteen. Yep. He takes the ball Just off the, the table, left tackle there. For another Tabor College first down. Nice hole. Nice hole. And then you get filed. A nice tackle to get him another four. Nice tackle. <laughs> Shouldn't say tackle. A nice push there at the end. Yeah, that's great. Great to see <laughs> file out there. Not the typical kind of lead blocker, but yeah, he's he's doing he's doing what he's got to do to get that first down. There's the center pulling out. Fantastic. 
nice Those kinds of plays. Five yards. Right That's an absolute games. great thing right now in this game, games. particularly with the wind being a factor, being able to do that in this third quarter and get through that quarter to where we don't have to compete with the wind. Mm -hmm. Keep that clock rolling. Definitely a clock game. We're just running. We took the offensive lineman back out, and we've got uh, Ron Usher coming back in, tied in. There's that jet sweep motion. We hand off to file. Looks like they're going to mark him for about four yards. Third and three coming Jacob up. Jacob file with the tackle, uh, with the run there. Nautic ear. Picks Nautic. up three, brings up third down and two for the Blue Jays. Nautic key. On the That's the name that I could. Yard line. I could butcher that name. All I could say it three or four different ways every time. I, I, I'm going to stick with uh, Wadaki. <laughs> okay. I think you've got it. I don't know. He's a good player. I know that. So he's been all over the field today, and there he is again. I think he was on the initial hit. Uh, going to be Ray about Rio. yard Middle short, Middle looks like. Down. He got two on the play. He needed three. Fourth, Fourth and one. The Maybe they're going to play field position, or are they going to uh, roll the, the dice? Yard line. I got to go. I'm, coach, if it's me, I'm going for it. Last game of the year. I'm, uh, I think I'm going. <laughs> I, 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 agree with, I agree with you. The stats probably don't, but uh, I know. And, and I would agree with you, and that's going to be close. I imagine they might have to measure this. I don't know. We'll see. They're marking it right at the stick. We'll have to wait on the spot here to see whether. Oh, that's not a very good spot. Yeah, I don't know. I, I, that, that seems a little bit short. Boy, if we can go up to the instant replay booth in the NFL, I'd be questioning the spot. From where they've got it, it looks like it's going to be short. From where they should have spotted it. Yeah, I don't think they're going to get this one. Couple inches short. Yep. Spires will take over at their own 45. Let me watch this replay here because mm. I got to get to the 44. And that that seems like a. It looks like with that first effort there, he lunged over the uh, marker, but but it, so officials saw there, something different. But if you look at where this side judge even had ran in, he ran in at the 44. Yeah, it's always interesting when the, the side judges get in there and they kind of conference and they adjust. Well, I saw right here, one's running in right here. But I think they both ran in at the four, 44, and then it's the center ones that move it. So why are they overriding the side judges when they're not even though I don't, you know, like I said, I don't always understand that, but... I'm not the official. Well, there's a there's initially a, stopped at the line of scrimmage there. Martin had he he, uh, he just kept his legs moving and uh, they got their own scrum going on that play and turned it into five. I was gonna say I thought we had them for no gain. And they kept pushing. got about five minutes left. I imagine they probably would want to take a deep shot on this drive too. Check down there. Number five, that's uh, Brian Gutka. Uh, Riggs was all over him, but the still completed the pass. Tabor. 47-yard line. That'll bring From up From Keensburg, Colorado. 
two. A junior, six foot, 190 pounds. A third and two, see if we can get a big play here. It looks like he's gonna sneak in there just for uh, enough for the first down. What Martin got, are they gonna mark him a little bit? Nope, they're gonna wave. They're gonna give him the first. Thompson with the carry. That'll be a first down for the Spires on the Tabor 45 yard line. Quick print pass to outside. Oh. oh! It looked like he'd lost the... I was going to say for a little bit, I thought oh, there was a fumble. Passes complete for a first down for the Spires. Takes that number eight? Michael Jones from first Fort Worth, down. Texas. Yeah, those uh, they've got some athletes out there on the perimeter and uh, just try to get them the ball in space. They're going to be able to have an opportunity for big plays like that. There's, there's some explosiveness. Hit early. Let the defense fill in there. Had a lot of guys hit him in that play. It looked like Jawan Thompson had got in there on that initial hit and held him up enough for the rest of the Blue Jays to get there. I think that first had. down run doesn't go anywhere. It's going to be second and ten for the Parker Spires. and Riggs and, and Cole all came in there towards the end. Dump off to Martin. Short completion for the Spires to Good job two, rallying one. by the Blue Jays. We had Parker and Tartavius Juwan there. He picks up about three yards on the play, bringing up third and we seven. Take him down. We're coming up on third and seven. The Tabor Imagine they're probably going to consider this uh, a two down play call. It's almost got to be with the wind right before the change of the quarter. Let's pick the up here. Big play time. A kind of a fumbled snap there trying to set up a screen. And he just got screen rid of it. Pass is incomplete. Bringing up fourth down and seven. He wanted some call in the backfield there. I don't know what. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, he, uh, is that, was that Big Pond back there, 36? Yeah. Um, he was looking for, a, I think, a pass interference kind of hold type thing. And, um, yeah, when you're at the line of scrimmage like that, that's not a, that's not a, not a thing. Well, Carter, Carter Mayer there on that outside defensive end, he got a nice jump on the ball, and I think he – he kind of startled that outside over there and just kind of disrupted things out there too. So, yeah, that's right. And, and Carter's been—he's been a, a real interesting guy to watch. Well, that was a Did nice get kick. No. Oh. Definitely had distance. That, Off to the right. He is wide right. The yeah, Carter, uh, uh, he's really came on the last uh, few few weeks, um, especially last week. I think he had well, he maybe had two sacks and two tackles for losses, and yeah, and even a fumble recovery. So he was he was big. Yeah, talented freshman. Um, and Is he from a, Wisconsin? I believe so. He's been playing a lot, and who's uh, uh, Chris uh, Vixima? Yep. Another freshman from Georgia. Last week he was uh, had six tackles, one sack, two tackles for losses. But we got a double reverse here. There's Hoppus. He's coming around the edge. Great play to start off that drive. Looks like about Taylor a 20 yard gain. Double reverse for the Taylor offense. First and ten at the. 
Taylor, 44-yard line. Well, great. <laughs> That's a great block by Renteria. <laughs> little, little block, but it was it, it was, was perfect. All that was time. needed. All that was needed. You got to be careful with those those kinds of blocks too nowadays. Um, you know, they're they're calling a lot of the maybe the the, the plays that were just kind of standard back when we played ball. Yeah. <laughs> the ones those that are, you want to level them with. Yep, those are penalties now. Yep. And they go back to Hoppus with a jet sweep. Looks like he'll uh, get about three. Again, carrying the football. He's out to the 48 yard line. Hoppus has had a, a pretty good year this year. He's done a lot. He's made a lot of big plays. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's got a great set of hands on him and uh, just a great all around football player. Um, Coach Hill, I think, was telling me the um, recruiting story behind him. And originally, I think he was committed to Washburn, um, you know, coming out of high school. And he had, uh, they, they, they had him kind of slated to be a defensive guy. Uh huh. And he just had no passion for that and wanted to be able to play receiver. And we said, come on down. Yeah, come on, we'll take it. We'll, we'll take it. Well, I was just looking at his season stats this year, and he's got uh, gains two yards, brings up third down, thirty-five receptions, four hundred and eighty-five yards as a freshman. And that's what they've got him listed as as a freshman. I'm guessing that's the COVID freshman, right? That, that is. That's the COVID freshman effect. Um, so really, he's a sophomore, but he's got he's a freshman in status. So. Um, you look at our top three fre our top three receivers this year are all listed as freshmen in status. Sanchez, Miller, and Hoppus. That's right. Young team, young talented team. Just gotta grow into that and uh Ooh. he's just gonna get rid of it here. Miller uh just throws the ball away and that'll bring up third down and yeah the big the big trouble that we've had this year um offensively is is the is the drop back the passing game um being able to protect that uh-huh like you talked about earlier our offensive line they're they're young they're athletic but they're they're young and they're they're a little bit light um light in the short so to speak and <laughs> haven't 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 fully got that uh, offensive line um, body uh, set up yet so it's it is kind of tough doing the drop back uh, game where you've got to let those guys just kind of tee off on you and be able to um, hold your ground enough and not let that pocket co collapse yeah game clock operator we don't have tents in college football, that would be the end of the quarter. <laughs> <laughs> well, we borrowed our, our, our game clock operator from the, the Tabor Classic the basketball uh, games that are happening right now and not used to that. So basically what that means is whatever, it's not really the clock operator's fault, it's whoever set up the clock, you have a choice to set it up as tense or not. And someone set it up with tents. Aha. Uh -huh. So you, when you go through the setup and set up controls, you can adjust that. Well, and I'm wondering if that might have been the do, – does, does soccer have tents? You might. And the thing is, you can – I don't know. Someone just might have messed with it. Um, but it, maybe it's with uh, the high school football settings. Ah. I don't know. Um because we have a football card that we, it's football numbers so there's codes you put in uh -huh. but you can even mess with Please those sure too to so if someone w sets w it but needless to say it may place. it probably has nothing to do with the guy that's sitting up here it's whatever whoever programmed it in or not operator error it's not an operator error it is uh above that level <laughs> So we've got actually probably a, a blessing uh, kind of going along with that, the clock operation or how that played out was we're not having to punt into the wind anymore. <laughs> um, we get to have the wind at our backs now. Good timing.
They could have argued that that rounded up to one second, though, too. Can we get oh, it? Oh, no. He was in the end zone. Yeah. Now, if Jackson would have been, he could have thought about it. He would have not yeah. touched it at all, and he would have hoped the teammate would have got there. The yep. officials ruled that the ball went into the end zone, and so the Spires will take the first just... again at the 20. Yeah, those are the those are the tough ones where you got to be extremely athletic and time up that basically a dive and then bat it back. Yep. And the Spires will start at the 20, and looks like they've got uh, their tight end in now at number 84. An eye, like kind of an eye formation. It was a good run there off the right tackle. About six yards, six, seven yards. Right down by Suckow, and he's our leading tackler for the season this year. I think he's had 55, 50, 60 tackles this year. Four for the Spires. I think that big pond in there at fullback now. Niket again with carry takes the ball for a first down out to the 33 yard line. Gray Peralt on the tackle for the Blue Jays. You got Donaldson inside this time in the down D tackle. They're going to go off the left tackle now. Into. Another good Niquette run for a carry, takes first down. To the 30, Niquette. To the 43 yard line. That's another first down for the Spires. Big pond leading the way. And this is one of those adjustments that we're talking about with Coach Henson and Kind of the chess game going back and forth, trying to find something that'll work there and then go, defense, nice make the defense there. stop it and In run it till it goes. Yeah. And we, we did right there, so that's yep. a good thing. Lepke and Thompson again. Wyatt Lepke with the tackle for the Blue Jays. Second and 12 for St. Mary's. We go second and 12, they go back into that double tight set. And the two speedsters up top. Tried to get a little clear out. Well, Keyshawn Oliver got his hands up, and I think was kind of a distraction coming off that right side. Might have made... Might have made Grimes throw it a little bit different than he wanted to. Yep. Look at him get up in the air. That's right. And in fact, I think he hit it. It looked like it. He it might like have deflected change. that ball a little bit. You know, maybe we can catch them in a little bit of a passing error, get a turnover. Oh. That quarterback scramble just gets got enough. us there. Grimes, on yeah, Grimes uh, run. definitely an athlete. Yeah. That's uh, and that's that's one of the things we've kind of struggled with as a defense this year is is being able to kind of contain that quarterback scramble like that. Yeah. I'm going to go back to my shoe statement earlier. Those shoes of Hill sure bug me. I, <laughs> I, I keep seeing those and thinking there's a flag. At 21 with the ball. He hasn't carried for Martin. I think that might be his first carry of the, of the half, isn't it? The half, yeah. Picks up. Looks like three. Tackle. Briggs Robin on the tackle for the Blue Jays. Picked up two, second and eight. We've got a long drive here. Been a couple times we've almost stopped them, but. Six 
success has all came from rushing the ball. It's a good run right there by Martin. Mark got a carry. big tackle, big shoestring tackle by, by folks. He's found some room there to work with and got to pick up a yard. See if the Blue Jays can get a stop here, maybe a, maybe a, a big play or a tackle for a loss. And they go back into that kind of two back set. They got that up back. I have a feeling they're going to just kind of power it. And yep, they have that lead block, but I don't think they got it. Doesn't, doesn't I think look well, like it's it. going to be close. It. We got someone down on the field, too. Is that Martin? Looks like it. We'll take an injury timeout on the field and be back in a few minutes. There's an injured spire on the field. At BombGars, we want to be your one-stop shop. From DeWalt power tools to workwear and footwear, plus seasonal goods, livestock feed, pet food, and so much more. Family owned and operated for more than 70 years, we knock ourselves out to deliver legendary customer service. And with more than 100 stores serving customers from the Midwest to the Rockies, we strive to have what you need. Spire's got a first down on that play. Infinity Fitness is open 24-7 for all of your fitness needs on your schedule. Whether you're looking to improve on basic health knowledge or are looking to power lift or body build, start with Infinity Fitness. We've got the facilities, trainers, and equipment to help you meet your goals. Join the Infinity Fitness family today. Call us at 620-877-0220. Infinity Fitness is located at 115 North Main Street in Hillsboro and online at infinityfitnessks.com. Many of you know that the Eitzen Agency insures churches, Christian schools, and other related ministries. A coverage that is overlooked for most businesses is proper cyber liability. Has your business ever been hacked? Do your employees click on links that they shouldn't? Your business could be shut down and have extreme costs if this happens. Cyber liability can reduce... We're back. They uh, uh, went ahead and gave the first down to St. Mary's. It'll be first and 10 on the uh, Blue Jay 37. And Niquette gets a ball for about four yards right up the gut. Niquette with the run up the middle. Looks like gain of four on the play, second six for the Spires. These are the kind of drives that kind of wear on a defense when they keep getting two, three, and four yards and just down after down after down. That's right. Just kind of wears them out, and uh, you know, get, once that offense can get in a rhythm, um, that, that's when offenses usually become pretty dangerous. Mm -hmm. You get kind of lulled to sleep a little bit, and then a big play can happen. Big fumble plays like this are big, though. There we go. That's a good play for the Blue Jays. You get Oliver out there and made a big Again stop. On the and carry, but there's a loss on the play. Nice job at the Tabor defense stringing that one out. It was uh, Mason, Khalil Mason, too, and there was a couple out there. Yeah, that's uh, that's uh, the defensive plays you like to see when um, playing your gaps, playing your assignments, um, forcing things to go where the help is. and. Oh. That was Lepke and Lepke and Oliver. Third down, last big third down they had. Uh, Grimes was able to scramble for the first down on a broken passing play. We'll see if uh, we can get a stop here. Interception. There we go. Oh. oh. Are, Are they, they going to interception give? and a fumble? I think so, but that should still be our that ball. That's it. It's fumbled and then recovered by Tabor. Brandon That's Perrault big. With the uh, pickoff there. Tabor will turn out, get the ball. At Fantastic play for the Blue Jays. And oh, and he tipped the ball. Tipped the ball. Ray, Ray Peralt had got the pick, and then uh, he'd fumbled it after he got it. And 
So you yeah, think that team, teamwork stats there? I say, I want a fumble recovery. You want an interception? Let's share it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I mean, that maybe there should make up an assist category or something for know. football. You also, it's not the way you want to do it, but we'll take it. That's right. We really need to see the offense here get going. Got trips out to this side. We get it out to Renteria. He's got a little room. Bradgeria He'll pick up reception. about six or seven. Real goes out of bounds at the Tabor 26 yard line, second and four for the Blue Jays. That's good. It, it, they've, they've got uh, Villarreal and um, that connection Curtis going the, there yep. quite a bit out. today, which reception wise hasn't really been there for Renteria a whole lot this, this season, but that's picked up today. 26. I'll tell you that Jackson Curtis for the Spires has been all over the field at 24. Yeah. I have seen him on play after play today. Is there strong safety? Yeah, I think that's nickel safety. That's where they got him at nickel safety, but he might play at both spots. A little jet sweep to Angel Sanchez. Angel Sanchez with a nice run for, for the first down up to the Tabor 32 yard line. Pick up the first down, get the get the chains moving. You know this this second half is flying by compared to the first half. <laughs> it is a lot less penalties. Well, I'm even scared to say that because I'll probably look at it and it'll be the same number. And right, because usually what I think is wrong. <laughs> Well, teams have been running the ball a lot more. Yep. Well, he, he's got some room. Renteria is going to take it for about nice eight yards, seven, seven yards. Seven on the play. A second down and three for the Tabor Blue Jays at the third. It's a nice tackle by line. Patterson. I think that Patterson, he's either from a Lenexa or a Wichita. I got a Lenexa. He's a transfer from Missouri Western. A lot of these schools, um, um, NAIA schools in particular, I think the KCAC um, had quite a few transfers from some NCAA schools uh, during COVID because the NAIA, for the most part, kept playing. Jacob and uh, that's right. That's the right. A lot of the students that just wanted to play uh, ended up transferring to NAIA schools. Well, no one wanted to sit out a year. Absolutely. And I think even with that KCAC, when they said they were even going to play a few games in the fall. That was good enough. Uh, okay, let's go. That's right. And that was weird last year. Man, that was weird. I mean, I'm working at the high school. Even had to schedule in the spring, work our, work our track schedules with Tabor's yeah. football and soccer. And, man, that was just an odd spring last year. Things overlapping that you thought would never overlap. Never, yes. Well, there's a... a, a He's Big third down stop down for St. Mary's the right there. Three for, Jackson had a uh, carry for a loss of one. Out. Definitely got to be frustrating here for, for Nelson for calling plays too. Just not quite getting things going, but it's it's not like it's it's just been this way all day today. That's right. Um, one thing works for a little bit, and then it doesn't. Well, Hewlett gets off a, a spiral. Really good uh, spiral punt, and <laughs> that's nice. Couldn't couldn't stay in bounds for a return there. It's a good thing. Get him inside the 20 to start that drive, and you know, having to go into the wind here in the fourth quarter. Got a few updates of scores here if you want to hear them. Uh, still uh, third, nope, looks like the final score. That'd be, well, not final, no. Vila Friends 20, Vila 20, Friends 0 still. Sterling 36, no, first and 36, Sterling 14 in the fourth quarter. Bethany um, 13, Ottawa 47 early in the fourth. Southwestern is still leading Kansas Wesleyan 28-21 early in the, or late in the third. There's a flag on the play. False start, number 36, offense, 
Five yard penalty, first down. That'll bring up first and 15 for the Spires. The Spires are going to get backed up a little bit more of that penalty. Tamer and fans, pick your defense up. It's always, for some reason, it always seems a little bit more uh, <laughs> maybe embarrassing when a running back jumps off sides than an offensive <laughs> lineman. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know why. I mean, it's the same thing, same penalty. It just does. Looked like the ball's on the ground there. The cat fumbled. Uh, Looks like he maybe oh. fell on it. It'd be a great place uh, to get it for our offense. Defensive line of Tabor. No gain on the play. Second and 15. Well, this would be a great place to hold them for two more downs. Get Absolutely. The ball back, they'd have a hard time punting into the wind. Big break we would need right now. Roll out. We're looking for Hill. Come back to him. That should not be complete. That pass nope. is caught out of bounds. It brings up third down and 15 for the Spires. Big play for the Tabor defense here. Come on, Tabor fans. Help your defense out. I think there are some people still cheering, even though they might be frozen. Yep, that was in that. He just didn't have the control all the way through there. And yeah, probably just give a shout out to our uh, film crew today. Um, doing a fantastic job. I'll tell you, I worked with Riley a few weeks ago with uh, high school, and I tell you, he does an amazing job. Riley and Chris Glanzer and that Absolutely. crew with uh, that whole thing. Man, I do appreciate them and how much time and effort they put into it. Oh, wow, that's getting pretty close. Wow, that's a generous spot. Look at this slot side judge and that side. There you go. That's a little bit better. Okay, yeah. That's the first and one. They're, they're first still hey, the chain crew. That chain crew better be moving it a little bit. <laughs> they got a little antsy there. That should be about a yard short. Yeah, from the other spot, it it, uh, it looks like it might even be two yards short. Yeah. I was going to say, our, our own Jane crew there started moving it a little bit before they should have. They were just taking it in their own hands. <laughs> they did not result in a first down. It'll be fourth and a very short one. I was going to say it's a very long and one. The punting team on the field. It looks like it. So we've got uh, just one back deep right now, Angel Sanchez. So I wonder if we're. To uh, four minutes and 45 seconds. Oh. Thank you. Yeah, that's a little bit long. Yeah. I'm wondering if we're maybe there was one hiding. I was only counting ten for a second. We had all oh, the out there. Had that rugby style punt, barely well, got it off. And I wonder if that's a it's a called fake or punt. That punt what you see? The you know they're the always running to see. Ten. That's a good point. It definitely could be, especially. Uh, <laughs> You know, last game of the season. and So you take a few steps to the right, and if you see something, you can go. I don't know. That's always an interesting look to see how they different offenses are going now. I mean, you look at the style of how things go. And I mean, I, it's been, I don't know, 30 years since I played, but even just in the last, I don't know if you guys look to the sideline already, but just even watching how everything just changes from the time you, your center puts a hand on the ball, looking to the sideline, play changes, defense changes. That's right. Um, it's just such a fast-paced, action-packed game anymore. Just the evolution of that, uh, how much the game has changed. Yeah. Is. And the importance of these guys up in the booth, 
Um, what they're reading from what the defense does is saying, okay, they're lined up like this, let's run this. Um, it's just it's so different than when, what it used to be. Absolutely. Uh, just, the, I mean, on the, really the complexities of a lot of these schemes, the amount of uh, um, knowledge that you have to have uh, as a player now is really kind of uh, mind-boggling when yeah. uh, you look at some of the playbooks and uh, just different sets and things. There's a nice surge. Renteria with another carry. Picks up about three yards. It looks like our line judge on the, uh, the uh, visitor's Jays. side. He's been staying with a little bit more generous <laughs> spot than uh, on our home side down here, but they've been meeting in the middle. <laughs> Well, I'm guessing the line judges on both sides are getting a lot of talking to, um, a lot of advice from people behind them. <laughs> you think maybe? <laughs> Here we go, fans. So this is uh, the, the second half. We've had a lot of third and shorts. Yes. And we haven't really came Listen. out on a whole lot of them. So. This is a big yeah, call we've got right that here. Shift play. We're gonna hand it off here. Oh, that's Met not. in the backfield. Man, you got to punt it here. I mean, tie game and you know, your defense has been playing well all game. Um, they've got to go into the wind, and they haven't had tons of success through the oh. air other than the, the, the first play of the game when they had that. Um, the big pass. For yeah, they had a big pass, and that was with the wind. So, yep, this is this is uh, definitely a, an all three phases kind of game where special teams has probably been a big highlight of it. It has been. And defense. Make that trying to get that That's return on. Right there. That is. Well, you need to go back to that time. We had the ball. Nice we moved the ball really well that one drive, and we had two huge penalties. That took us out so of field goal range. Absolutely. And, on um, and we have a kicker. Yeah, absolutely. Nice punt there by... Um, sorry, I'm not up on our punter's name all the time. Is it Helig? Helig and, and Hoppus had that fantastic Where's Nelson? Coverage. Nelson's our punter. Is Nelson our punter? Helig's our kicker. Oh, I've been... Yeah. I'm sorry. I've Dehan been, uh, Nelson is our punter mispronouncing that all game, so I apologize. There you go. Good pressure. Good pressure. Good job by Oliver there. Chasing Grimes out. Yeah, Keyshawn Oliver's been up around the line of scrimmage making plays and uh, causing some disruption quite a bit, especially the second the half. Yeah. So yeah, Nelson's done a nice job punting today, putting them in some bad situations. I mean, good for us, bad for St. Mary's. Looks like we've got some kind of a penalty. Intentional grounding. Number four, White. No grounding. Spot foul, lost it down. That's a huge play. That is big. That's another 15. I don't think their coach is very happy. I mean, I, I don't remember seeing a receiver really in that area, but it seemed like he might have been out of the, the well, pocket at that point. I think point. one, he... And he, he might not have got it back to the line of scrimmage either. And I think one had left the zone. I mean, he was already 20, 30 yards down the field. And that was definitely, I think, his focus point. Mm-hmm. There we go. There's a replay. Yeah, and he did not get that. Uh, yeah, there was nobody around there, and he did. It, he didn't get out of the pocket either. Yeah, that becomes. We're now at second and 21, 22. Let's see if we can capitalize on having them pinned back, and it's kind of a fine line at this point in the game where you. You're tempted to bring pressure, <laughs> but you've got to kind of toe that line of keeping things in front of you and not getting too aggressive because well, we've been hurt by we've been hurt by that a couple of times. Great defense there. 
Fantastic defense. Is that Lang? That pass falls incomplete. Bring now that Peralt. was uh, Mason and Third Peralt. Down and 25 yeah, you got to kind of remind yourself that that it's okay the if there's defense. things the that the come underneath right on those uh, yep. pass plays and, and you can rally to the ball. Here we go again with that. You know, he almost tripped, but he hung on. Imagine probably your only options right here if you're St. Mary's is do what they just did and, and kind of hit that fade route again or try to clear something out and get it underneath and maybe get yards after the catch. A little shovel pass Ooh. screen. Uh, I'm no. sure they're going to call that as that an incomplete pass. By the Spires. That brings up fourth down. Uh-oh. This is where you hope it's not something that's going to be a uh, automatic first down. Yeah. And this... This is the stuff that's cost us a little bit today. I wonder what that is going to be. I didn't see too much after the play. After the play, unsportsmanlike conduct, number 45, defense. 15 yards, automatic first down. There's a huge play. Yeah, that's pretty frustrating. I wonder what uh, maybe transpired to have that happen. It was, and it was at the bottom. And the thing is, it's. Oh, I wonder if he, no, I didn't see anything. Whatever, it had to be a word. Maybe. Because there was definitely nothing, no physical action. So it was obviously something said because there's definitely nothing physical. I tell you what, I played a lot of football and uh, I've heard a lot of things and I've never really heard any unsportsmanlike well, uh, penalties the first for choice about the half. verbal. Um, I was going to say the things that I've heard Never were flagged, and I don't, to be flagged for something right there. I mean, I'm sure we could probably flag a lot of we, the I stuff gonna, that, I, I, that I've heard when I've played. I was going to say, we, didn't know it was we probably flaggable. should have flagged everything. <laughs> right. There's a lot of things that should have been probably flagged, especially in the KCAC, <laughs> <laughs> if you look at what the title of it is for. But it wasn't, and so that's, I'm really kind of curious what possibly could have been flagged right there. And maybe it was something before we even got the shot. I don't know. But, yeah, from what we saw there. But you saw two people. I think there was two flags, weren't there? Two officials, I think, threw it. I, I, I only saw one. Okay. I, I, might, have, I might have miss, miss seen that. But, but we just talked about that. We, we've, we've shot ourselves in our foot a couple times where, whether not, not on a penalty maybe, but a, a third down where the quarterback sneaks out of there or, or something big where they've gotten 15, 20 yards and we should have got the ball back. Yep. Um, well, let's just get it back. Play ball now. Going back in there to uh, Martin. He's going to pick up about six. Martin with a carry brings up third down and one. Four. Tabor, their second charge, time out of the half. I think they want that ball back and make them punt and then uh, try and get a field goal here before the game's over. Yeah, I think you have to um, try at least, and maybe you get to stop here, get a punt, have them punt into the wind, and then you get uh, get your shot at things. Yep. And try to preserve a little bit of that time. Well, let's not keep the timeouts. I mean, there's nothing, no reason to keep your timeouts here with a minute 20 left in the game. Um, you got the wind on your side. Even if they get a first down, I don't, I don't think St. Mary's is going to go to drive down the boat, drive down the field. Um, and I've got to dust off my knowledge about overtime. Um, well, is this going to be the 25 yard line? I think it's just like college. If uh, you're, I think this is the 25. I might be wrong go on the yard line. Possession to possession. 
I think you get the ball at the 25 yard line and you, so you get an opportunity for two first downs. Just, I mean, you, you just each get the ball. Ooh, that looks uh, like this is a, it, we've got our generous uh, official up there. <laughs> the side judge up top is uh, uh, here we go. saying it is a first down. The line judge, or the line judge down here. It, uh, oh, look at this one here. Who's looked it? like he was and marking got the it short. Umpire. I like the way they put it down. I think it's short. That run did not pick up the first down. It's fourth down and short for the Spires. There we go. Game clock operator, <laughs> please reset the game clock to 112. Man, they are watching time that. Timeout, third and final timeout. Yeah, he is. He's on point Tabor with College. that clock. Here we go. Let's see what they go. It's there. So if you're St. Mary's, I don't know how you can really go for this. Um, that, I don't think, I mean, maybe they will. I mean, it's the last game of the season, so sure, why not, I guess. But the fact that you would still have to go 70 yards into the win when you had a trouble passing and you've only got a minute 12 left. I mean, they have all their timeouts, but wow. it it doesn't seem like the right strategy for them to do that. So I'd imagine they're probably going to come out and punt and uh, just rely on their defense and well, I try to get into some overtime where they can switch field position and uh, not have to compete with any any wind or anything like that. I think it would be the same thing. They would be ridiculous to go for it and give Tabor basically 10 yards. Yeah. I mean, uh, I mean, if they, if they, Healy's been a good kicker this year, for, and they're bringing their offense back out. Um, Maybe they're just going to do a, a, a hard try count, to draw us off, and yeah. then they'll call their timeout. Hopefully, that was a uh, uh, something that got brought up to our guys there on the sideline. Was watch the ball, don't jump, do not jump. Well, I don't think there you. Because I guarantee you, don't jump. Looks like they flinched. I think we had that one of those, someone on the line. Seventy four. Number four. Yeah. Offense. Yeah. Five yard they, penalty. And I think you were right. You were right on the money, Grant. They wanted to see That's if they could get us down. to jump. Just to give us a shot to see. Well, you got you got two really um, gifted coaches here, um, as far as football knowledge goes. Oh, strategy, and strategy, huge. And, and chess. <laughs> it it it's it's like a chess game. When I was on Gardner's staff, um, he had just great respect for Henson always, and um, yeah, it, it, it's interesting to see this game play out how it has. Oh, this is. Bad for St. Mary's, but really, you know, Tabor hasn't moved the ball. You look at you look at um, statistics for this game. We've had 300 total yards, which actually seems more than what we probably do. But 142 passing yards for the day, 154 rushing. Yeah, that's uh, moving the ball. Um, you know, between the 20s has not been a problem for the Blue Jays. How many yards did we say Renteria had at half? I think he had 75 or 80. Okay. Um. Yeah, he was at 85 yards. Oh, almost he, had that, and Sanchez a little bit behind him. He was open. I don't know if you noticed there, who's that down the middle? Is that uh, Jerron Usher or was that uh, Raquel Jackson? I think that was. But he was just breaking open. That's hard hard for a quarterback to see. That's I noticed that last. Uh, you noticed that in high school, all the receivers always go, "Hey, I was open. I was open." <laughs> yep. I wish they could play quarterback a little bit because every receiver is open, according <laughs> right. to right. <laughs> it's hard to see that. Some good pass pro and a good uh, throw and catch there to Hoppus. So how far does he need to get for the kick, Grant? 
Uh, I would imagine you'd probably want to get somewhere right around the 20 to 25. I, I mean, he, he, we can make them longer than that, but that's probably where you feel uh, the most confident. Is. So we need the ball on the 20, 25 yard line, you feel? Yeah, I would I would feel good about that with what I've seen. Uh, Helig, our yeah. kicker <laughs> that I've been calling our punter all day. Uh, well, maybe Nelson will come in to punt and kick now. <laughs> yeah. And then I'll... <laughs> That'll really throw me for a loop. Well, that was a direct snap to Renteria there. And he's going to break three, four tackles and get about four yards. Well, that's interesting because now our clock's really click ticking. It is an interesting call. Is the official going to stop the clock and say we don't have tenths of a second now? Spike ones? Uh, I don't know. Because we do have tenths of a second going, and, and that's not right. Yeah. <laughs> I hope he doesn't embarrass our clock guy again and say. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I imagine we take a, a shot here. Um, probably for, I mean, it, it really close to the sideline, but you can go anywhere on the field if you're getting the first down, get up and spike it. Um, you just probably don't want to see something that's short of a first down. Um you know you're yeah. you're in a little bit of a pickle no timeouts and we better get up and Hillary kick that get your kicker go fourth down it's a tough play get everyone up there get them all set get everyone off the field and see if we can get it snapped and kicked as time is getting ready to expire it's kind of exciting here Oh no. Looks like it's going to be short there. Uh, and that field goal attempt falls short. Thing is, he knows he can kick it that far. Yep. Yeah, and warm ups, he'll, you know, hit some 35, 40 yarders and knock them through pretty good. Well, I think he can kick them that far, but that makes you almost wish as your quarterback at that point, you've got to throw, you've got to throw a route. Yeah. You got to throw it to the sideline. Hope your receiver gets it, or it's going to be incomplete. Throw it or throw it away. Yeah, yeah. give your give your kicker a chance even to kick that. Um, it's a 40, 45 yarder, but you got the wind at your back too. Yeah. Um, now we're going to look at an overtime game. Here we're we're going to find out what kind of overtime rules we have, but um, I do think it's a 25 yard line for each team and. Yeah, I imagine they do a, they do the coin toss. They'll choose what end zone we go to. It'll both be from the same end zone. And then uh, who gets to play defense first and who gets to... And usually, usually with this, what it'll be is uh, the team will choose to be on defense first so they don't, they don't know what they have to do on offense. To finish it if they have to kick a field goal or if they're going to have to score the touchdown. Yeah. Um, unless they really, with the wind, it, they both will have the same, I think. So. Yeah, and we, both teams have had failed kick uh, or field goal attempts too. Yep. I'd hate to get, I hate to ding Helig on this one though because yep. you don't. That's a lot of pressure for a kicker just to run out there. And well, and that kind of a, I, I really can't imagine being in that situation where you're really he's had two plays. Yeah, uh, the whole game other than that last field goal attempt. You know, there was a kickoff after the, uh, you know, he had the uh, kickoff at the half. Yep. And then uh, kickoff after our score. Yep. And. <laughs> Other than that, you're just trying to stay locked in the whole game. And the and extra point, I guess, and, yeah. You know, in this weather, too, the, the, the temperature, that's got to be tough to just stay warm and loose throughout the game and and kind of locked in like that. and um, Then to be rushed out. Yep. The coin yep. toss was won by Tabor College. They elected the north end of the field. It'll be first and 10, St. Mary's ball on the 25-yard line. 
Hmm. So did they elect to def... Well, they def chose this end. So they chose which side they're going to go to. St. Mary's won the ball first, so they're going to put the pressure on. That's interesting. Yeah, it is. Maybe not. Maybe they're just doing it to put the pressure on. I think that's the what you have to do. Uh, probably that supersedes anything with the um, wind or, or that kind of thing is just having the possession uh, uh, go to them first because they're going to get a shot. Like you said earlier, if we hold them to a field goal, you know, we know exactly what we've got to get so done at that in the point. Overtime, well, it's first and 10 for the Spires at the 25 yard line. Now, if I saw it right earlier this year, there was an NCAA game, Division One that after so many overtimes, you end up going to a, uh, it's like a tire, there, there, you, there's a, it stops. Yeah, I, um, It was I, like nine I, overtimes. Do you yeah, know what I'm talking about? I, I think it was, uh, I remember seeing some kind of highlight on that. I think it might have been 25. Northwestern and. It was a Big Ten or, another, yeah, I think you're right. It was a, and I can't even think of what they did after, after three or four overtimes. Then it goes to a, like a two-point conversion type of, they, they put it down there at the kind of the goal line area, and then they just start going play for play or something. Yeah, yeah, it's, uh, it's weird. Uh, so, yeah. There's Martin with a lot of running room. He's going to get up there and get a first down, gain of 11. So the Spires incomplete pass on their first play, but that second That's one sure down. made up for it. The Spires inside the 15-yard line. First and 10 at the Tabor 13. We're going to go into overtime, and this game is still going to be done probably earlier than a lot of games. Ooh. I think he heard footsteps coming on that one. That yeah. Bringing up second and ten for the Spires. At Who the was 13. that? On like defense, there was that. Uh, I think that was uh, Suckow. Yeah. Once again, he. I think he is the leading tackler for Tabor for the year, right there. Well, and you know, one of the reasons I imagine that is, is you know, he's a great player, but he's also been healthy. <laughs> Yeah, I think he might have been the one, him and Parker maybe are the consistent uh, presence for the Blue Jays throughout uh -huh. this year on defense. We played all the games. Yeah. Short run for the Spires. Like Riggs Please Robin got nice. in on that Seven tackle there. Yeah. Got third and six, seven coming up. Big play. See if we hold them to a field goal. Imagine they're probably going to get uh, Grimes maybe out in some space and give him a kind of a run pass option type of oh, he's, look. I think this was planned. Oh, looks like he might have got in. Oh, this is a touchdown. Yep. This is an NFL. There's not going to be a review. They're talking, though. One official gave it a, a touchdown. This other line judge, though, he's talking to him. But I think his own player. <laughs> they're now saying... Are they saying out of bounds, or are they saying this is extra point? I think it's extra point. Yeah, I do too. And he's but had some confusion over the there for Spires. Time. Yeah, he's got the ball on that cone. I think. I think he was in. Yeah, I did too. Well, that's going to put a lot of pressure on Tabor here now. That wide. Nope. Kick is good. Yeah, so that that changes some stuff, and you know exactly what we got to do now. We got to get the uh, got to get a touchdown, and that's the mindset that you've got to go with. There's no no field goal. Got to score. 
play four quarters of football, and they haven't scored since the minute and a half mark of the first quarter. <laughs> That's right. And uh, well, let's see what they can do. They did it, so now let's do it to them. Got that heavy on the left here. He got it off to Hoppus. Boy, oh, he hit him. He did, and it was a good tackle there. That pass from Villarreal. Oh, no, 35. 25 or 35? It looked like 35. Okay. Then Casey. Carl, yeah, Harrison. Yep. 16 yard line. From Alabama. That was a nice hit. I was surprised that uh, Villarreal was able to get that ball off it. That defensive lineman was right there. He was. He was not not surprised. And Renteria is going to pick up the first. That run by Renteria will pick up the first down. First and ten for Tabor at the 13-yard line. We'll still have a chance to get another first down. First and 10 for the Blue Jays at the 13 yard line. Got some matchups over there on the right. Mm, that ball he was got, low. He get, barely got that good grab by Sanchez. To <laughs> yep. Picked Sanchez it up off the carpet. The grab off the turf there. Uh, picked up three, four on the play. <laughs> second and six. No, we swapped out our extra linemen. We've That's got our Joseph. tight end there. Uh, Joseph T. <laughs> Didn't look like he was going anywhere. Renteria with carry. Little or no gain on the play. Yeah, this down here in the, these areas, just my uh, natural tendency or nature, I love, I love when we, we go under center. Um, especially down inside the 15, 10. Um, yeah. You get a lot of really good opportunity for that play action. Um, and and guys just get a little bit more open when that is a more of an elongated uh, play. Well, it looks like we're going to be short of that first down, I think. It yep. is a I think we're about a yard short. Right there, about a yard. At the three-yard line, it's fourth down. Very short. So this is an this interesting is a, call. Yes, it is. And you do something where you've got a chance to get the first there. You, you know, you're, you're having guys sit right there just a little bit before the goal line. If you're going to pass it or, or are you just going to stick with a run and have faith in your own line that they can pick up a yard and do a quarterback sneak and giving it back to Renteria. I think he's got it. He's got the first, definitely. He almost looked like he was going to get an extra push to get in the end zone. I'm happy with the first right now. Absolutely. <laughs> Keeps it alive. Yeah, what a, what a fun game and a, a, a way for the seniors to end their, end their career is an overtime game. Yeah. Just ex extend those playing days a little <laughs> bit longer. You know, you get an extra quarter of of play. Ooh, he got big. Bowen moved to the backfield. Problem is, everybody else Did went we to fumble the backfield. Or, uh, well, I sure hope not, but I heard people yelling ball. Everybody else is yelling. Officials are saying second. Well, they got and some good penetration there. 
Yeah, they're, they're at uh, six. Kind of wondering if I would have just, you know, done a quarterback sneak. I was going to say, there's got to be, we got to be thinking a little bit about, I don't know, I, a little too much of, let's do what we do. That looked like he got there kind of early. That pass is uh, no flag. It's uh, well. I think he was throwing to Usher, third down for the not Jays. to uh, uh, Hoppus in the Sierra back. High. I think he was throwing to Usher on the front side of the end zone. Hmm. So now it's uh, it's it's going to get a little interesting here. Have you put yourself in a corner where you don't feel like you're going to run the ball, or you're just going to do some two pass plays? Mm-hmm. Back in the gun here. Need some good protection. We're going to have a timeout, I think, though, by Tabor to talk this over. Timeout. Tabor. A good use of a timeout. We'll take a quick break, too. Create an estate plan that values what you value. The Biblical Estate Design Service from MB Foundation is a will planning service that brings your faith into the process of preparing a God-honoring estate plan. Many donors of Tabor College have used this service to create their plan and have chosen to leave a gift to the college, a gift that will have a lasting impact on future generations of Tabor students. Learn more at mbfoundation.com slash Tabor and get started on your plan today. MB Foundation, giving meaning to money. And we're back here with uh, third down and goal. After that timeout, Gardner and Nelson talking through the plays. Tabor's got two plays here to put it in the end zone to tie it up in overtime. Let's see what they... Yeah, just not even a, a real chance there that at that one. You're kind of little bit of an odd kind of outcome there yeah yeah there's a little bit of room to run yeah you know we always can see what we see from up here or in the stands but that's when right you're, when you're running for the quarterback position and you've got guys chasing you from behind you see what you see from the field it is a different viewpoint yeah, that's so right here we go season's on the Get it in the end zone, get a look, and that uh, intercepted there. The pass is intercepted in the end zone. It's a frustrating end right the there. Garrett Carter. Final score, St. Mary's 14. That is, that's a tough way to end the season. An overtime uh, loss to a really tough St. Mary's team. And uh, yeah, the Blue Jays are going to go into the offseason uh, two and eight. Three overall. Three and eight overall. St. Mary's will go in uh, uh, three and seven. I don't believe they played a non-conference game. I don't think so either. So, so there's been a lot of good things, uh, uh, good growth this year for sure, and uh, a lot of young people, young guys getting on the field, and uh, it's going to be exciting for next year. Hopefully, there's some good motivation and yeah, we get in the weight room, get stronger, get faster. We hit the recruiting trail and. Um, yeah, and that's replenish. A, and it's a big thing. No one wants to lose a game here, and knowing and how you how they do the off season, how they recruit, how they how they build from this. It's frustrating, but once again, look how young that line is. Look yeah, how absolutely. young. Look how young this team is. It's a young group. Um, build. You got to build on it. Just absolutely. Get stronger. Get better. Um, yeah. 
What but, uh, what was that final score of that um, Southwestern? Southwestern game? Well, a minute and a half left. Southwestern is going to beat Kansas Wesleyan 42-24, to and that means Southwestern will be the KCAC Conference champion. And Wow. And, uh, you know, likely there could be three KCAC teams going into the NAIA playoffs with Bethel as well. And, you know, that used to be unheard of. For the KCAC <laughs> to send three to postseason, and I know this is tough for Tabor to lose and have a, a, a record like this sometimes, but you know KCAC continues to get tougher and tougher every year. You're uh, absolutely right. And and to see a hundred kids out here with Tabor, these are good kids. These are good athletes, quality kids um, with a great ability and and it's tougher every year the kcac is a tougher and tougher conference to play in and people just don't see it they see the wins and losses and they say well maybe they're not as good well that's not necessarily true absolutely right i you know i i I think back some of our teams that i played on um and i i look at these guys and the speed that's out there now i'm like man i i Oh. I probably would have struggled with a lot of this back then. And, you know, I was on some really good teams, and there's definitely a lot of athletes out there. And, yeah, um, yeah. we'll wish them the best in the off season. We wish, uh, wish the best for the Spires in, in their off, off season. And, uh, yeah, we'll sign off. And thank you for being with us and listening to this game. Thank you. Have a good week and a good off season.